Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Fandelver and Below, The Shattered Obelisk. I'm your Dungeon Master, Kelly, and this is episode two. I hope you're all excited to be here as I am. Uh, we're going to go around, we're going to introduce the players, and we're going to talk a little bit about a giveaway that we have from our sponsor, Bookworm Games. Uh, but first, I want to thank you for coming back here to episode two of Fandelver and Below. The feedback we've received over episode one has been fantastic so far, and we're really happy that everybody is coming along with us on this adventure. Uh, as said before, I'm your Dungeon Master Kelly. I use he and him as my pronouns. I'm an Aquarius, and I'm finally back from the Midwest. So uh, I hopefully will have my internet stable tonight, uh, because at least one of us uh, cannot have internet problems. Well, let's let's find out what that is in just a minute. Uh, but before we hop in, let's say hello to our cast, starting with Christine. Hello, I'm Christine. I use she, her pronouns, and tonight I get to play Lady Alessandra Barrocal, our human, or not human, I'm so used to saying that for other ones. Uh, ASMR Paladin. Nice. Nice. Uh, over to Caitlin. Hello, I'm Caitlin. I use she, her pronouns, and so does Anthea Briarfoot, the halfling artificer of the group. Yes. Beautiful. Uh, He's down beneath changed to white because um, potions it looks and good. stuff. Science, really. For science. Thank it you. got bleached out by, by lemons and blood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. That's how science works. You heard it. Here. <laughs> we don't follow. We're we're firm followers of the jerk of the Gurch here, so we don't follow science. Um, all right, uh, down beneath we have Amy. Hi, that's me. I'm Amy. My pronouns are she, her, or they, them, and I am playing Lyric, the Tiefling Bard today. Good times. Fantastic. Uh, and a beautiful still image is being played by Krista. Hi, Krista. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Krista. I use she, her, they, them pronouns. Um, and despite not being ambulatory, um, I am going to be playing uh, Carmilla Alizarin, um, our Dampier fighter. Um, and yes, apologies. I am I am also not at home. Uh, I am actually over where every, well, almost everybody else is. Normally I'm on Chris's side of the water. Now I'm on everybody else's side of the water. But I'm staring at my brothers and having some technical issues. So apologies, but I will try to make up for it with my uh, signature pizzazz. Yay, signature pizzazz. I love signature pizzazz. Uh, you know who else I love? Chris! What a kind and warm introdu introduction. Uh, I'm Chris. I use he or they pronouns. Uh, I'm a settler on traditional KCAT territory, and I am playing Sidri, our half-elven monk. Uh, and I think the first one of us to be knocked unconscious. So pretty pleased about that. And it's a tough job, but someone has to do it. So, you know, we'll make it work. Well, thank you so much. I am very excited to be getting into this. I'm also very excited to say that we are being sponsored tonight by the amazing, the wonderful, the the opulent Bookworm Games. Bookworm Games is a Vancouver area proprietor of dice and treats for your table and for your mouth. You can go there right now at bookwormgames.com and use code DORKTALES to save 10% off more than 170 types of dice, ranging from uh, plastic to resin to liquid core to gemstone, wood, and more. You can even get candy dice to eat at the table and scare your friends. You can get teas, you can get familiars, you can get jewelry, and you can get World of Darkness D10 gemstone sets, which are pretty dope. And What's more, very soon you're going to be able to get your own gaming tables. That's right, Bookworm Games is making gaming tables that are going to be priced well below industry standard with a lot of customizations that you will be able to use to make your gaming nights something of legend. Uh, not only that, but Bookworm Games is giving us a bunch of stuff to give out to sponsor uh, this channel and to, you know, get some hype up for Vandelver and Below. So tonight we have a uh, a dice map case. Is that what they're called? They're there. It's like a dice case, but it's a map and you unroll it. And it's also like a rolling map, but also something to keep your dice into. And uh, so what we're going to do is uh, after the break, we're going to give you the keyword that you can type in and uh, then you can have a chance to win. So wait for that. And uh, I will let you know. And if you're watching later on YouTube, I'm very sorry. Um, I wish that there was a way that we could do that through YouTube very easily, but just, just know that we love you and that the real prize is spending time together. Bookworm says it's a scroll. A dice scroll. What was I saying? Map. I was saying map. It's a scroll. It's a dice scroll. That's absolutely correct. Thank you so much, Vlad the Impaler. 
Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, everybody go to Bookworm Games right now and use code DORKTALES to save 10%. They are a wonderful sponsor and we couldn't do it without them. We also couldn't do it without you. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can also go to patreon.com slash dorktales where you can get a ton of additional perks, uh, additional episodes every month, podcasts. There's one that uh, Christine and I recorded a while ago that's finally up, uh, as well as uh, at certain tiers, you get to do things like create gods. We have a new divine producer uh, that just came in. Professor Multiverse has created a god and sent me all the details about them today. And ironically, they're like right ready to be slotted into Shards of Nern, uh, but we'll get to that very shortly um, in just a couple of episodes. <laughs> all right, so with that, uh, anybody have any last questions, comments, or concerns? Uh, you all long rested last episode, so you are at full health again. You have your spell slots back. Uh, anyone who has to pick anything at the beginning of the day, please do so. Uh, besides that, you decided that you were going to be headed toward Crag Maw Hideout to rescue a friend of yours, either Gundren Rockseeker, if they are available um, and, and still kidnapped there, or uh, Sildar, who uh, bought Sindri some drinks, and Sindri thereby has uh, some very, very warm and fuzzy feelings for him. Uh, are th is there anything I'm missing? Our friend. Our dear friend. Your dear friend. Your dear your dear friend. <laughs> Our dear goblin friend, Kurd. Oh, of course, Kurd. Kurd. Yeah, he I joined us overnight last night. He's slightly less stinky now. Slightly less stinky because you forced a bath on him. This is true. All right. So Kurd is with you. I, uh, for, for tokens, I am using a token of Dermot from uh, Call of the Netherdeep to represent him because all of the other goblins were like throwing fireballs and Kurt, Kurt doesn't know how to do that. So um, we're going to go with that. Um, all right, folks. So without further ado, we are going to head into Fandelver and Below, The Shattered Obelisk, Episode 2, Pragma Hideout. It's morning at your campsite. Light is streaming through the canopy overhead. You find yourselves full of fresh determination, ready to rescue your friend and to take on the day. As you gather your things and prepare to venture forth, who's taking point? What are you doing? I think Sindri was a little bit humbled yesterday and is not super as keen to take the lead, but is happy to walk alongside someone. Okay. Um, Carmilla probably would. Um, I think she feels like she needs to redeem herself after the awfulness that she had last game. Okay. I think uh, Alessandra will still be up in the front because she's like that's what a paladin's supposed to do doesn't matter that i almost died yesterday it is what i am supposed to do perfect anthea will be kind of in the middle she's very small and still mixing potions for her the, for the day <laughs> so in that case i think that means lyric is probably uh taking up the back a little bit and is probably happily playing an instrument unless someone tells her not to Eric, you're, oh, no. you're, very, you're very talented. Yes, that's quite nice. Thank you. May I suggest we put that on hold so it doesn't encounter any more unfortunate Nyx and Kerr bruises? Mm, but it could lull the enemy into a um, false sense of security. If I remember correctly, they all had wolves mm. with them. Mm. There was yeah. something along the line of Kerr is at six or seven wolves. Okay, well, well, if you put it that Penny. way, I suppose I can put it away for the moment. Some wolf. Not not unappreciated. But I understand that you are a hater of the fine arts, so understood. Clearly, that is absolutely my intent here. You can put me down on your list of haters. <laughs> and he'll try and uh, quiet himself from laughing. All right, so as the hater's going to hate, you continue off, making your way toward Craigmall Hideout. As you're walking over to the side, Sindri, you're going to feel a little hand, kind of like reach up and grab your waiting hand. Hi. Hi, Kurd. Am I coming? Yes. Hold hands. Friends hold hands. 
friends do hold hands. Uh, Sindri will kind of look at Lyric and just. <laughs> uh, you, I will have to let go if there does come violence. But you know what? Lyric will take good, uh, good care of you in that case. Who would you fight with us? What? Mixing potions. Fight. Yes. Well, you fought against us. Hmm. Um. Hmm. No. Uh -oh. No. Kurt. 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 No fight. The 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 the, 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 the goblin. Goblin. G goblins mean. Goblins bite. Kurt. No fight. Kurt. Good night. Okay. We can work that. Oh, okay. Kurt want to be this? big boss. What? I I know Anthea. Um, hmm. Perhaps you should uh, give him some of the that uh, the special stuff that you have, so he can be stronger. And she'll like over Kurt's head, wink at you. <laughs> you know this uh, special potion. Oh, I don't know what that. Oh, oh yes, yes. Um, yes, huh? Kurt. I have a special potion. Um, mm, she's gonna rummage through her tool belt. Special uh, here. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It makes you very strong, the strongest ever. Uh, here. Special drink. Yeah, just oh. for Kurt. Make me a deception roll. Okay. Is, can, can I help? Yes, Is you can help. You can roll with stuff. advantage. Okay. Um, I forgot that this hat jingles, so there, that's the thing. Um, oh, 17! Okay, let's roll some insight. Okay. What do? Make strong? Make strong, yes. Uh, very strong. Hmm. Strongest Kurt ever. Is that why red? That's why it's red. <laughs> red ones get stronger. And faster. And faster. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Everyone desperately trying not to laugh. Uh, uh, Kurt feels strong. Yeah, see, it works right away. Mm. You'll just keep getting stronger and stronger. So, will you help us now, big strong Kurt? Kurt is big boss? Yeah. Hmm. Yes. Kurt help. Kurt, 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 oh. Kurt will help. And Kurt is big strong. Yeah. <laughs> Lyric kind of sidles over to Anthea. What exactly did you give him? <laughs> Berry juice. Strong tastes good. <laughs> mm hmm. Quite tasty. Being strong what? tastes very good. Poisonous berries. Right? Uh, not to most races. Hopefully not to goblins as well. Oh god. I don't know biology very well. So as he struts off, he like kind of picks up a goblin scimitar and starts swinging it around. You're going to see a bunch of like green gray hives are going to start to appear behind his neck. It's Do probably you know just What was that you just said about most? It's probably the soap. Oh, probably, yeah. Right, because that wouldn't have taken. He doesn't wash earlier, very well. It? Mm, he's got a it's thick layer of grime on him. Mm. Mm. Soap, so potentially it's very harsh on his skin. Mm. Uh huh. Yeah, sure. It was the soap, not we the very, the, not the very strange, unusual, very drink, berry that, juice, berry juice that we don't know what it will do to his biology. Yeah, I mean, sure. It's, it's just Let's berry that. juice. I, I see he was eating the same berries just earlier today as we walked. <laughs> I, I think he eats I mean, just about everything. I think sometimes you need to have something like twice before it gets allergic reaction. Anyway, let's continue <laughs> on. I'm so, sure this is fine. The room will run alongside Kurd and helpfully hold his hand. <laughs> of course. Um, thank you. <laughs> Kurd going to kill many people. Well, not people, goblins. Mm -hmm. Kurt is really strong. Not people? You know what? At this point, I'm not questioning it. Hmm. Are you people? Well, I suppose yes, if you're speaking peoples as peoples as humans, then I don't, 
I don't want to presume, but I think there's only one of us. There's a I, half. I'm, I'm, I'm fairly certain that yes. m- most, not just oh, humans, yes, yeah. count as people, yeah, because that would be very problematic. Yes, so I think Gerd, uh, I think goblins are people. Hmm. Hmm. Weird. Don't like. <laughs> people are stinky. Steal from people. <laughs> Don't you steal from other goblins? Mm, it's different. More borrow. Can oh, steal from. I've heard of this borrowing before. <laughs> hmm. Anyway. Do you intend to give it back? Mm, not if get no caught. Mm. We do big I don't sneak. Think that's how borrowing works. Oh, sneaky. I still don't think that's how borrowing works. In any case, I'm going to write that down as a goblin borrowing practice. We probably should be quiet on our approach. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can get quieter. Mm, I will sort of look at our paladin and fighter friends who are wearing heavier armor. We'll we'll do our best. All right, Mm. this way. Mm. And with that, Kurt will lead you onward toward Kregma hideout. Kurt takes you around the way, along goblin trails that have had their traps very well disarmed by yourselves. Kregma hideout is um, a little cleft, a little cave entrance, just there above that stream that you inhabited yesterday. There's a little place for you to kind of crawl along the way. You could also gently trudge through the water, which of course is only about two feet deep at the, at the, well, it's about two feet wide and foot to two feet deep, deep, depending on where you are. So pretty easy to get through. Curd will take a step forward and go, mm, you people, you people, no see. No see what? No see dark. I, I don't yes. see in the dark. I do. No light. No need light. Would, goblin. Goblin have good yeah. dark sight. I see. Would it be would it be a problem if I if I did have light and she will cast light on um a rock she picked up just now? Maybe. Can see oh. light easier than can see you. I see. Oh well maybe maybe Carmilla, can I hold on to your, your coat? Oh, well, yes. And I'll just go course. behind you. Okay. And if things if things explode, I mean, if things um start to happen and we start fighting, um, then maybe I'll maybe I'll make it make a little bit of light around. Mm. I'll Did keep anyone this else rock. hear explode? Did yes, anyone else hear keep... explode? Hmm? I don't well, know I mean, if we start fighting, too. I think you can light it up at that point. They know we're here. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Then explode. Big then explode. explode. Okay, okay. Big boom. Bada boom. Bada boom. Bada boom. Okay, I'll do my best. Uh, Carmilla will actually pull out a little bit of rope out to sort of trail it out of her backpack and oh. provide you with a length. Hmm. Thank you. Now, you'll, now you won't have to stay quite this close. You'll have a little more movement. And if okay. anything attacks me, I'll be able to keep it away from you. Oh, thank you. That's appreciated. I do my best of work course. from afar. Yes, and you do very good work, so let's well, keep you afar. Okay, thank you. All right. So Before I Before we head mm-hmm. in, mm-hmm. Um, Alessandra is going to try and scoop up kind of like a small fist size, like smooth rock from the river. Okay. You can easily okay. find one. She's just going to hold on to it so that she can cast light on it because she has that as an ASMR um, yeah. and fling it into whatever fray they end up in because she'll be able to see it happening. And with Sounds her dark good. Machine. Also, I want to quickly correct myself. I said that it, it is only two feet deep. It is actually slight. It is basically like stream deep uh, in here, but it's only about two feet wide. So you should be able to wade across it pretty easily. And uh, and Theo will not drown. Oh, that's good. No, I was thinking. I was like, two feet's not a problem if you're not three feet tall. So that's good. I, you won't you won't drown. You can you that's can good. wade. Well, awesome. Right. And, but I'm sure between the lot of us, we could carry you and herd. <laughs> All right. So, 
as you head up to the front cave mouth, you can see that the goblin's trail leads there. A shallow stream flows from the cave mouth, which is screened by dense briar thickets. Curd is going to kind of hop over and look into the thickets. Guard's not come back. Well, guard's still there. He points where you see some corpses that are still outside. I don't think they're going to be a problem, though. Good. Uh, what do you do with your dead? If someone saw them, would they just leave them? Mmm. No. Um. Hmm. Maybe make prayer? Maybe burn? Mm. Maybe eat? Mm. Okay. Interesting. I'm gonna write that down. Depends. Mm. Am I hungry? Alessandra's just gonna make a hungry? face if she hears that. <laughs> Maybe eat. Oh. D- depend how hungry. Mm. Let's see if we can find you something else to eat. Interesting. Hmm. All right. Who go first? I I will go first. Okay. Hmm. Let's go. Adventure. The water yes, pours adventure. out of the cage. And with that, let's head over to our maps. The cave stretches out ahead of you. You can easily make your way inside. The water rushes past you. And as you wade into it, you realize that it actually is going to be quite a benefit here. It's going to give you a bit of cover noise. Stepping inside the cave, you can see well can i get a um can i get a perception roll with uh with disadvantage actually for anybody who takes a step inside sure okay this is smell based so anybody can make this my rolls continue uh that's three and a five so three and a five okay uh so with per with my perception it's a three Okay, sounds good. I got a six, but I got an add 20 on the other one. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. That's okay. Okay. With the disadvantage, I got 11. 11? Um, you're mostly smelling running water at this point. Fresh, clean water burbling out from this natural river, this natural creek. Seems pretty natural. Natural springs. You should bottle Natty water for Natty Light. Exactly. Maybe I should put some in bottles. As you take a step inside. Carmela, you can see in the dark, right? Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, As you take a step inside, you can see that immediately to your right... Just inside the cave mouth, a few uneven stone steps ascend to a small, dank chamber on the east side of the passage. The cave narrows into a steep fissure at the far end and is filled with the stench of animals. Now that you're close enough, you'll be able to get a nice whiff of that. Three chained wolves snarl and rattle their chains at you as you approach the mouth of their own little cave. Each chain leads to an iron rod driven into the base of a stalagmite. It's a little grim, but I have an idea what we can do with those bodies. That is a very practical idea, Sindri. Let's let's do that. Uh, I'll head back out. Okay. And so grab you will see some bodies. <laughs> there are three goblin bodies um, that are uh, two of them that are in the thickets and one that is kind of like half submerged. Actually, the one that was in the water would have floated off at this point. Um, but yes, there are two bodies still in the thickets. Fair. Uh, I'll help uh, haul one of the corpses inside and then okay. pitch it to the wolves. Yeah. Sounds good. I. Uh, all right, well, so. I guess they do get eaten. Uh, what I'd like <laughs> is uh, both of you make me an animal handling roll. Okay. And if With one of you succeeds. 
Uh, no, but if uh, one of you succeeds, both of you succeed. Well, well, Krista, good luck. <laughs> what what did you get? That one. Uh, no pressure, right? Nope. <laughs> Is that a nat one? <laughs> one? It's a four, but like, yeah. Oh, Go gosh. team. So, so modified seven, modified to a seven. Oh gosh. Okay. Um, so, um, you toss the body in and it kind of like flops on the ground and one of the wolves is going to go up and, and give it a sniff. Um, and as the first wolf is giving it a sniff at the length of its chain, um, Krista Carmilla is going to come in and huck one of the goblin corpses and hit that first goblin right between the eyes. Oh no. It's going to look up at you and snarl, starting to make all manner of growls and barks. Oh, oh sorry, no. it, hit, it hit the wolf? It hits the wolf right between the eyes. Okay, sorry, you said hits the goblin, and I was like, oh no, there's a goblin. Oh, pardon me, no, you, you use the goblin. Okay. Sorry, you throw the goblin, oh, the goblin's good. corpse hits the wolf in the I face. The wolf. <laughs> oh no. Oops. Woof, 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 woof. Friend? Maybe we should uh, leave. Uh, it is going to leap forward and snap at its chains, and I'm going to spend a hurt them more. Uh, and there is going to be a loud <laughs> as the chain is going to pull the iron rod out of the slagmite, and it is going to lunge forward at Carmilla. Carmilla, what's your armor class? Oh, that's a great question. It is 13. 13. Okay. Oh, is it only 13? I only have leather armor and not great decks. Oh, no. Oh. Uh, that is going to be a hit. The wolf is going to lunge forward and is going to bite into the side of you. Uh, that is going to be 2d4. One moment, please. Jesus Christ. <laughs> gonna die that, by wolves. It's gonna be six points of piercing damage. I need you to make me a strength Half save. Oh, God, oh my god. Uh, well, luckily I'm plus five to strength. Uh, that's a 12? A 12 is enough. It bites you in the thigh and tries to pull you off its feet or off your feet, uh, but you are not going to be taken down so easily. However, I should probably get an initiative roll off of everybody just to see how this goes. So, starting off, the wolf is low on the initiative, and Kurd is equally low on the initiative. Nat 20. Nat 20? Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. This is your character, Caitlin. This is, this is just perfect for you. <laughs> Okay, so I've got Anthea followed by Ella followed by uh, by Carmilla followed by Lyric Sindri Wolf and Kurt at the end. All right, Anthea, you are going to, there's just enough light going in here that this wolf is only slightly obscured uh, by the dimness Ooh. inside. Uh, looking forward, you see this wolf lunge out, bite into the side of Carmilla and start to Ooh. try to wrench her off her feet. Blood kind of wells from its slathering jaws. What do you do? Oh my goodness. Um, um, I'm just gonna huck a firebolt um, thing at it. A okay. uh, firebolt Make... jar, jar uh, of firebolt. A jar of firebolt? You need yeah. to keep the joker. <laughs> yes, it's a deck save, which they're probably pretty good at. Oh no, I had to make a ranged spell attack. No yeah, mind. I was gonna say if it's fireball, it's just it's just, a, it's just a pew, 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 pew. Between. Oh, oh, no. Um, that's a seven. A seven? All right, your yeah. firebolt goes wide as you try not to strike Carmilla, uh, and it is instead going to bounce around inside of the cave. Uh, I'm going to spend a something good happens for you because I got eight of them bought for me. Uh, so I'm going to make it. Okay, uh, roll something me your damage. Happens? Oh, thank you. Um, uh, right. 
I'm just gonna make sure I'm doing the right thing. Yes, one so it's a D10. ten. Woo, eight. Eight points of damage. All right. Yeah, that was good. That was uh, you are going to hurl it and are going to hear a resounding yelp from inside of the cave from another wolf. Oh, I, I think there's more. And uh, yeah, your firebolt is going to bank off of some of the quartz crystal lining the walls, and and you'll hear oh. or whatever a wolf sounds like. You guys, I'm not a I'm not a zoologist. Uh, that has all right. interesting properties. I'll have to look at that later. Anthea, do you have anything else you want to do? I uh, no, not really. All right, then Ella, it is your turn. Okay, um, I will step up next to Carmilla to attack that wolf. All right, go ahead and make me an attack roll. Uh, twenty-two. That'll hit. Roll me damage. Four plus three is seven. Beautiful. Uh, your blade is going to come down, slashing into the wolf's hide. It is going to snarl up at you, uh, preparing to make a second pounce attack. But before that time, do you have anything else to do on your bonus action? Mm, I don't think so, no. Okay. Uh, I'm going to spend a hurt the more to jump Carmilla's initiative and have it try to bite you. Uh, it is going to snarl, and that is a nat 20 to bite you. Holy smoly. Nar. So, uh, so Alessandra, uh, it's going to kind of throw Carmilla aside and leap at you. Holy crap. Uh, that is going to be 11 points of piercing damage. Ouch. Are you still Are up? Are you still up? Uh, no, I am well and truly downed. Okay. Uh, it snarls and leaps toward you, Alessandra, um, and is going to pounce you to the ground, uh, tearing a chunk out of your, your shoulder and neck. Um, Carmilla, it is your turn. Derek, get Alessandra. Uh, she's going to draw her two axes, her two hand axes, because we're all very tight in close combat. Uh, and uh, is going to use her attack and her bonus attack, or her action and her bonus action to attack. All right, do it. I'm going to leave, if that's okay. <laughs> what did you just roll? That's a nat one. Oh, no. no. Time out, dice time. And what'd you get with your second attack? Uh, the second one is nat 20. a... Um, uh, no, it's an it's a it is a, an unnatural twenty. Uh, that is going to be a hit. Roll me damage. Um, Take Okay, so you are going to lunge forward with your first axe, and as you go, uh, blood is going to kind of spray off of Alessandra and make your grip slip. You're going to end up throwing your axe into this cave with the wolves. <sighs> yep. But the second one is going to connect. What was your damage? Four. How do you do it? Yeah! Oh my god. Uh, it's just, it, it, nothing fancy. Uh, she's just gonna come down straight into the, uh, kind of swing down on an angle, just straight into the thing's neck. Okay, and its head is going to loll to the side as it collapses to the ground. Lyric, it is your right. turn. What do you do? Um, well, I think I saw one of my allies go down and yep. lots of what sounds like very vicious combat. So we're going to move up to uh, get as close as I can to that because, you know, running towards danger is the best way to go. So 5, 10, 15. And I think I can see Alessandra is down in the river. Alessandra is down in the in the, in the creek. Yeah. Okay. We're going to reach over and do a cure light or cure wounds is the, uh, the goal here. All right. There. Let's do it. We'll go ahead and roll it. Uh, so that's going to be a total of eight hit points back, I think. All right, Alessandra, your eyes are going to snap back too um, as the wound in your side, is, or pardon me, the wound at your throat uh, is going to heal over and yeah, you with will... Yeah, the mumbled, not today. Perfect. All right, do you have anything that you're doing with your bonus action? I would like to glance up and see what's happening with my other allies up and this 
try and get a sense of the situation, and then grant some bardic inspiration to someone. All right, sounds mm. good. Uh, it looks like there is some type of kerfuffle around the corner inside of this mm -hmm. cave. Um, Carmilla has just cleft a wolf's neck open. Mm -hmm. uh, and the wolf has dropped dead like a stone, uh, but you can hear the sound of some yelping and growling around the corner inside of the cave. Mm, and I can see Sindri just up you, near the mouth of that cavern. You absolutely can. So let's do a grant it to Sindri. All right, how do you do that? Um, in this case, it's going to be a jaunty whistle, sort of like the level up tune from Final Fantasy. But legally distinct. All right, sounds... But legally distinct. Sounds good. I know that tune. Bum, 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 bum. That bum, bum just saved us a lot of money. Um, all right, so, uh, Sindri, it is going to be your turn. You have a Bardic Inspiration, which is a D6 at this level, if I'm not mistaken. It is. What do you do? Uh, so, looking into this room, there's the two wolves, and they're both still chained up, right? They're both still chained up. One of them is very badly singed and is trying to, like, put out his flaming muzzle. Okay. Uh, do they look like they're like straining at the chains to come fight us, or are they? Um, do one of them just wants to be put out. Uh, the other one is, you know what? I'm gonna. It's growling at you because it is naturally like it is a wolf. It is naturally part of its pack. Uh, however, it is looks. Make me an animal handling roll as a as a reaction. To vibe check. Oh my. That's a that is a one. Okay, that, you that's... think. So it is eyeing you up, the one at the back of the chamber. <sighs> eh, all right. Um, I don't have a ranged weapon. I have a club that I can throw, which is a very funny, funny thing I can do. You can, th okay. <laughs> um, so the one that's like trying to like growl at us, like, and it's like mm -hmm. aggressively, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna hurl my club at it. Okay. Cause Make I, me Make me a ranged attack roll, please. Uh, uh, use use strength, please. Oh, gee. Because mm, mm. it's it's an improv weapon. Mm. Oh, God. I mean, no, like, the club actually has a throne range on it. Does it actually? Yeah, I think it... Well, it used to. Hold on one sec. I might be thinking back to third ed. I think you might be thinking back to third ed. I think everything had a throwing range back in third ed. <laughs> club equipment. Hold on, just give me two shakes. Oh, uh, no, it's, it's light. Okay. The, the club uh, can't even handle this. <laughs> wow. Um, Make me an actually, attack roll. In that case, I'll uh, go up with my scimitar and just, like, uh, put it, <laughs> take that one out, I guess. So I'll do my, or my cutlass. So short, short sword. There we go. That's how I say that. So I'll All run right. up to it and short sword it. Okay. That's better. Uh, that's a 25 to hit. Uh, that first hit will hit. Yeah, so, and that's going to be nine points of damage. Yikes. Okay, it is still on its feet, but is going to let out a, a, a cowering yelp and try to back away from you. I hate this, uh, and I will also back up to, like, let it, uh, let it out. Okay. Uh, so. All right, uh, it is going, well, you did attack it. Is it going to opportunity? I'm going to spend a something good happens for it to preserve its own life. Yeah, because if an opportunity attacks me, I'll bonus action and hit it back. And this is bad okay. for everyone involved. Yeah, so. it is. What about, uh, are you going to do anything about the one that is slightly on fire? Uh, I can't really put it out for it, so it's going to kind of have to be on something there. Or I can okay. dump water on it with my for my water skin. As you get, as your object interact? Yeah, you can. Sure, I'll do that. Uh, do me a favor, make me an animal handling roll as you do that. <laughs> if I could roll above a four on animal handling checks today, that'd be real cool. That'd be real great. Is it a four? <laughs> it's it's a it's a nine. So like I I, te I I technically got what I wanted. So that was a six plus three is nine. Okay, so um, you got what you wanted. So you're going to like reach out, pull your water skin, splash this thing in the face. Uh, it is going to like look at you for a moment with that like look of simpatico that happens between animals and people. And then it's going to take your water skin out of your hand and run to the back of the cave. You know what? That's fine. That's this fine. <laughs> fine. I'm not even mad about it. Okay. 
from the back. Uh, we're we're you... doing great, guys. Like, solid, solid work. I just want to give everyone a real good pat on the back. This is going great. I can pat your back. It's giving real level one energy. Yeah, it really <laughs> it is. A lot of energy. You're going to hear from the back of the group, what going on in there? <laughs> I don't know. Hmm. This the prejudice against away. shorties. Yeah. Yeah. We should unionize. Ooh. Me red yeah. pamphlet yeah. in your studio. Ooh. Okay. Uh, Kurt is going to hold his action just to, to stealth. Actually, he's not going to hold his action. He's going to stealth because he... Hey, he's actually really good at stealthing. What do you know? So Kurt is going to kind of like dent, 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 dent against the wall of the outside cave. Is he singing his own theme song? Yeah, I yes. think so. Don't All question right. it. And with that, uh, it appears that the wolves have backed away and are just kind of whimpering and trying to hide from you guys. He's pretty good at it, though. I feel like Lyric's hands are like twitching towards her instrument to try and wanting to accompany. Yeah, he's strangely good at it. Um, Anthea's going to reach the closest wall and try to touch if there's the quartz weird stuff that kind of bounced her her throw mm -hmm. and just kind of like try to scratch some off to study it sure uh, it I looks like it. that sounds good you can go ahead and try to take some off once you're in a little bit further inside the cave I think that'll okay. be great okay all right. Uh, so it looks like combat has has um, fizzled for the time being. Um, what would you all like to do? So are we still being stealthy or have we given up on that notion? Is there anything behind the wolves? There is a fissure that looks like it leads further into the cave proper. So it looks like a narrow opening along that east wall that um, climbs up quite a ways, actually. Um, looking down, you can see that the base of that area where the wolves are trying to hide looks like the equivalent of a natural garbage chute where people have been, well, not people, goblins and goblin kin have been throwing down leftovers, bones and things like that into a pile down this natural chute. Looks like there's a hole Kurt? up above. Kurt, where does that go? Mm. The hole by the wolves. The wolf hole? Yes. Mm, 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 mm. That go to Clark. Big bugbear. Leader. Want to be king? Uh... Carmilla's going to look at the rest of the party. How how big is it? Is it like a... Uh, it's, is it like three feet across? Uh, it is... it is um, It is big enough you could squeeze through it. Absolutely. We could boost the smaller ones up first. The scout's out. Ooh, yes, I, I can't I see anything. Climbing. I yeah, have climbing that. equipment. You can climb that, huh? Uh, perhaps, uh, Sindri, I can boost you and you can put down a rope. Uh, if this is a secret way into Clark's area, perhaps it's easier to get to him, because that's you what want... we need to get, yes? You want eating room? Yes, we would like the eating room. That's where... Eating room other way. Oh, So, we can keep this in mind, but we, I think we're... If we can get in and out of here with just the rescue, that's probably enough, isn't it? We kill Clark? Our deal Rescue with first. Kurt was that we killed Clark. Mm. Okay, so let's go. Let's go get him then. Mm. There's short oh. up here. It, so he's going to lead us to that. Uh, the hole in the back of the room there, the fissure, or is it? Uh, he is going to sneak alongside the edge of the water and actually head further into the cave to the north. Come, come, come! You want eating cave? This way. Sure. Why we'll keep we'll keep this in mind, and I'll. You want rescue first? Yes. Me want me want kill Clark first. 
but it, compromise important to any type of teamwork effort. Oh, thank you, Kurt. That's a great union negotiation strategy. Mm, and, I'll write that down. <laughs> is it just me, or is he getting smarter the longer he's with us? Maybe it's the berry juice. Or maybe it is the berry juice. Perhaps it's the berry juice. Or maybe it's the mm. lack of exposure to other goblins. Ooh. <laughs> That's also, that is very likely. That would be a very interesting experiment, though I think very unethical. In any All case, right. we should continue on. I would like uh, to stealth. As... <laughs> okay, I would, like, I would like you to stealth. Make me a stealth sure. roll, everyone. Okay. Um, before I roll an awful, awful number, um, Carmilla will uh, check up on Alessandra, make sure she's, like, stepped out of the river and everything. Um, Lady Alessandra, are you all right? I'll be, I'll be okay, yes. Thank you. Okay. Perhaps it is best if you are not at the front as much. Carmilla's going to look very unsure of herself and feels like she's hurt Alessandra's feelings and will just sort of awkwardly nod and walk away. <laughs> oh, wait up, wait up. I have tiny yes, legs. Sorry, yes, of course. Because I kicked the cave. Oh my god. Ah. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm going to get us all killed. <laughs> it's great. It's great. What'd ha. you get? Ha. You? I've got disadvantage on stealth and I add zero to it. That's ten. We... Ten? Okay. I don't. I I'm in leather armor. I don't roll disadvantage, right? You do not roll disadvantage. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so what I'm looking at is I... four, four, six. Okay, so sorry, I have a six. ten. I have a four. I have a oh, sorry six. That is. I have a twenty-one from Petite Medic. So twenty-one from uh, Anthea. I have a twelve from Sindri, and I have two dirty twenties from Lyric. And from Kurd. I'm very small, can... no one can perceive me. Um, as you move deeper into the cave, though, you can see that the main passage from the cave mouth climbs steeply northward, the stream plunging and splashing down to the west side. It's actually covering up a lot of your noise. In the shadows, a side passage leads west across the other side of the stream, and above this point and down this passage, um, and Thea, you are going to find it impossible to see anything. The rest of your dark vision will work for everyone else. That's okay. I have a backup. I've got the string that I'm attached to Carmilla with. Okay. The rope. So trudging through the water, uh, Kurd is going to go Shh. this way and is going to veer into a western passage. This passage is choked with rubble and blocked by steep slopes. It's it's rough terrain to squeeze through here. But you'll be able to make it through with a uh, with a bit of easy work. Um, unfortunately, uh, one moment please. What is my passive perception as a goblin? That is not great. Okay. Um, as Kurd squeezes through the hole, he is going to go, mm -hmm. Why rope angry? That's not rope! And there's going to be a hiss and a lashing as a sleeping snake suddenly wakes and lashes out at Kurd. And... Uh, I'm going to spend another something good happens for your benefit. And as this snake lashes out, uh, this giant snake and curd are going to tumble down the slope directly in front of Sindri. Uh, Sindri, what would you like to do? Then I'm going to try and dispatch the snake handily. All right. I would like you to make me an attack roll versus the snake. Uh, using my short, short sword handily and footily. Mm. Uh, Jesus. Uh, that's a, an eight to hit, right. so... Well, you get two attacks if you have two scimitars. Uh, I don't have, I have a short sword, and I'll use my bonus action, uh, martial arts. Have you okay. used your bardic inspiration already? I don't remember. Oh, I haven't. So uh, with an eight, that's still another d6. That might not be enough to hit. 
It might uh, not be. You have determination. You have determination. Yeah, yeah. so I'll use determination and bardic knowledge because I have to declare before I roll uh, before I hear the result, right? You do, mm-hmm. and I have not said it yet. So, bardic. Oh, bardic is five. Thank you, uh, okay. lyric. Uh, yeah. that is going to be a hit. All right. So that with is with your determination, a, it's a hit. Yeah. Five points of damage. Five points of damage, one. and is that plus your dex? That's with my dex included. Okay. Uh, you are going to lash out, delivering a s- swift cut into the side of the snake. Uh, it is still alive. It c- hisses and tries to rear back to strike you, but you have martial arts. I do you have know martial Cobra arts. style. That is a 13. A 13. Um, from its angle, go ahead and roll me damage. All right. That is seven points of damage. Seven points of damage? All right. I'm burning. Something good happens like crazy, guys. Uh, <laughs> we don't, we can't right. lose Curd. Not this early. Really. It rolled a three to attack Curd, so I think it's pretty good. Um, all right. The snake is going to tumble out, and with two, uh, with with uh, a deft strike and a punch, you are going to cut the snake in twain. And, Curd, are you uh, all right? I could have done that. Of course. Stupid danger, danger rope. Don't like. Hey, look at, look, I brought you lunch. Danger rope. Hide evidence. Curd's gonna start eating the snake. Mm. It's chewy. Mm. Save for later. Mmm, good, good, yeah. Well, we can make that into some jerky. You're jerky. Uh, Sindri's going to, like, take a big breath in to say something and then just, like... All right. <laughs> Curd is going to take a step further, climbing through edge of cave. Oh god, I'm starting to speak like Curd. I'm sorry. He's climbing through the edge of the cave as he continues to make his way uh, deeper into the Kregma hideout. It's not that hard to talk like Curd, considering that's basically every millennial everywhere <laughs> talking about their danger noodles. <laughs> danger Plus, noodles. Why uh, sometimes particles are extraneous and you just don't need them? Yeah, that's true. Articles, particles. It is definitely yeah. true. Articles and particles. There Same thing, really. No, not that. Harpsichords. Tug tug. What's happening? What happened? There was a very large snake, but uh, oh. Sindri dealt with it. Oh, good job, Sindri. Thank you. We should follow Kurt up this dark tunnel. I... You lead. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Get ready. Get ready. Eating cave. Eating cave. He'll whisper down. Oh, oh we're close. <laughs> I don't like this. <laughs> All right. Sindri is more composed than I am. I just don't want to be into the snake eating cave. Uh, I'll so I'll I'll sneak up after uh, after Curd there. All right, sneaking up after Curd. Curd is going to kind of like wave a hand behind, and is going to confidently step into the cave in front of him. Those of you with dark vision will be able to see this. The rest of you can make your way up. Um, now the marching order at this point is um, Sindri, Lyric, Carmilla, then Anthea and um, Alessandra at the end. Is that correct? I think okay. so. All right. Sure, so that, right that works behind. Curd. I'm yeah, right up Carmilla's butt, so. Okay, no, right up Carmilla's butt. <laughs> um, yeah. Christine, are you good with Alessandra being in the back, or did you want? No, that's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was saying, because Carmilla might try to shuffle you at least, like, a little closer, <laughs> so that you're not going to get picked off at the back. But then again, I mean, Anthea's at the back either, so maybe you'll protect Anthea. <laughs> She's going to pretend it's so that she protects the rear and it's not because she keeps dying in the first like <laughs> first attempt <laughs> absolutely right. i have something for that i just can't see anything so curd takes a step forward uh and strides into the chamber and is going to say hey yemek curd is boss now curd is big strong curd drank magic potion curd is oh, no, 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 no. curd is very strong Kurt's not strong. Kurt's weak. Yemek will destroy Kurt right now. Yep. 
Um, and you're going to hear ah! as Kurd takes off running to the northern passage. And uh, get him! One of the goblins is going to chase after him. I'll try and intercede and get grab the one that's chasing Kurd. All right, everybody roll me initiative, please. Okay, we'll roll for Kurd. Ooh, Kurd has like a 20. Okay, Kurd followed by Goblin 1. That's great. 1, 6. 12, 14. Okay. Let's do it to it. So plus two on all of these. So looking at initiative right now, uh, I'm seeing that uh, the highest initiative is Anthea again. Out of you guys. So Anthea. No, sorry, that's not. It's um, Carmilla. Is it Carmilla? Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, I've got Carmilla and. The, uh, gob one. Sorry, again, it's Sindri. I only got a 16. Oh, Sindri's got buried. Sorry. It was showing up as a 12. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, no, it's okay. Thanks for letting me know. Berries. Too, too many, like, too many things in a row. Um, okay, so I've got... Um, okay, so, um, Sindri, I'm going to say that you are going to be able to get, like, one surprise grab attack if you'd like to, so go ahead. Uh, so, like, an arm, uh, an arm, arm or an, any an type arm of attack. attack that you'd like to do on this first one as he runs oh. by. Okay, yeah, I'll short sword him. Like, let's keep it, keep that going while it's good. Keep That's a, uh, 23, yeah. That'll hit, roll me damage. That's a seven points of damage on my, uh. My swing with my cutlass. All right. Uh, Kurt is going to run to the north, and as the other one follows him, you're going to lash out, uh, beheading him as he runs by, like he's in uh, Last Crusade, running down the tunnel. Uh, there's going to be a shriek as he dies. Uh, and with that, we are in an inertia- initiative. Uh, Kurt is going to shriek and go, I'm still the boss! I'm still the boss! And Carmilla, it is your turn. Uh, remember that you can move through your allies easily. Okay, wonderful. Um, in that case, I'm going to go uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay. Um, now, did I... I assume I, retri- I retrieved my other... Or was I able to retrieve my other hand axe? Uh, you didn't say that you went in and got it, but um, I, I'm oh, going to say that... Nope, I'm going to spend if something then. good happens to say that Sindri kicked it out as he was leaving. <laughs> Okay. Um, in that case, uh, I'm going to throw one of them at this guy that's uh, straight ahead of me, the one with the top knot. Sounds great. Uh, the one at the, the high north uh, is going uh, to yeah. uh, is going to be right in front of you. Go ahead and make me an attack roll. That is a nat fucking one. No! <laughs> I'm so done. <laughs> So you, he's going to kind of like look up where he's picking his nose and suddenly an axe is going to go whoop, 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 and he's going to like go ah, and hold his hand up and he's going to catch your axe with his bare hand and look oh, at I... it, look at you, look at it. What? If, and the others... if, I, if I could ever turn into a, a, a bunch of bats to get out of an awkward situation. Oh my God. <sighs> Um, uh, would you let you can you get to throw with your offhand? May I use my bonus attack to throw another? Yes, you may. Yeah. If he catches this one, though, he's your new character. Okay. Okay. You know what? Totally fair. I rolled a fifteen. That is gonna hit him. Roll me damage, please. Freaking Christ! Oh my God! Uh, two. Two. All can, right. Can it please like? hit the one that he's holding and just have it bonk him in the head a little. <laughs> yeah, it's going to totally break his nose. It's going to be awful. Okay. So he's going to ah, oh, my nose! He says in Goblin, Alright, uh, Carmilla, that is your turn. Sindri, you're up. 
Cinder's gonna look at the one that's now holding uh, Carmilla's hand axe and look at Carmilla a little bit, uh, and then just like a run in, uh, and then so I have thirty. I keep trying to move in the Dorktail's actual channel and not the roll the roll twenty window, which is very I do funny. that all the time. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to try and uh, I'll short sword this one as well while I'm at it. All right, sounds good. Do a run by short sorting. Uh, yeah, not going to work. So that's going to be a ten. So uh, that is probably not going to. You have your determination back. Oh, I do. Sweet. Uh, you uh, can spend it now if you wanted to. That puts me at uh, twelve. So that's probably not. Probably not good enough. So I'll make it. I'll just make an attack with my uh, my okay. martial arts. Okay. So running up, you take a swing at it. Uh, he's going to parry with his new axe. With uh, the, for... Okay. <laughs> so so I uh, got got did my uh, unarmed as a sixteen. Uh, that will hit though. Yeah. So that's gonna be uh, eight points of damage. All right. How do you do it? Uh, I'm going to uh, grab the hand axe he's holding uh, and just like Ching. like. Gra or just grab it and then just like kick him square on the chest into the cave roll. Uh, All right. And if I can, for dramatic effect, toss the hand axe back to. Uh, I'll you, it'll use your object interact, so it'll spin through the air, and you'll be able to grab it and just go. Here you go. <laughs> yep. You wanted that. Okay. Uh, yes, please. That'd be lovely. All right, Anthea, it is your turn then. Oh dear, not being able to see is bad news. Oh, this is bad news. Um, I'd like to use my magical tinkering to um, get some light for myself because we're kind of going loud anyways. Sounds good. All right. Um, are you heading up the slope before you do it or just doing it right out there in the open? Oh no, I guess heading up a little bit. Okay. Sounds good. So Probably um, running into Lyric and then doing it. Okay, so you're going to use your action to cast a light. You'll be able to see this fissure. Uh, steep fissure yeah. is going to um, uh, be able to be climbed up. It is f basically a snake's lair here um, with mm -hmm. a bunch of like like snake skin, sh um, uh, snake skin sheddings and, and other things through here, um, as well as a bunch of dead rodents. Well, not dead rodents, skeletonized mm -hmm. rodent pellets. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll be able to make your way back up if you'd like. Yeah, I'd like to go to where Carmilla and the rest are fighting. I just didn't want to lob something in there and not be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, uh, so uh, inside of there, you will now get a look at the room. And you know what? I'm going to use this time to describe the room for everybody else. Okay. Oh my god, there's so many more problems. <laughs> All right, so looking into the cave, you can see this large cave is divided in half by a 10 foot high in, in escarpment. A steep natural staircase leads from the lower portion to the upper ledge. The air is hazy with the smoke of a cooking fire and pungent from the smell of, pure, of poorly cured hides and unwashed goblins. Lyric's natural enemy. All right, so as you head up, Anthea, you're going to see all of this. That is a steep slope there. Um, what do you do? You still have a bonus action. I actually don't think I have anything for a bonus action. I okay. keep looking and I just can't find anything. Okay, so the room is going to be flooded with light, at least, as you rush up. Uh, it's actually you... not that big. It's, oh, it's only 50. It, so it's not really light, it's magical tinkering. So it just okay. sheds bright light in a five foot radius and dim light for an additional five feet. Okay, so you'll be able to see that there are a couple of goblins just beyond the edge of your light here. Yeah, um, I'm just kind of, of like a little glowing moat, but it's something that I can use. All right, one of which that uh, Sindri just uh, smashed into the wall and killed. Um, oh, gosh. Okay. Uh, goblin number one is dead. All right, so Yemek. It is Yemek's turn. Um, as you rush in, uh, he is going to snarl and grab a hold of a tied up man who is on the ground on the escarpment and is going to snarl. You think you're tough? Come on! I'm the tough one! I'm the boss! And... You'll hear uh, from down the corner, uh, Kurt's going to say, no, I'm the boss. Um, Sindri, uh, he's going to huck a javelin at you. Uh, and that is going to be 13. 
13 won't hit. My armor class okay. is 17. A 17? Oh, god damn. Uh, a javelin is going to go whoosh, into a uh, one of the bed rolls next to you. I will kill you. Hey, Carmelo, there's something else here if you want to throw it at them. Okay. Uh, goblin number two is going to lunge forward. The goblin immediately in front of you, uh, Sindri, is going to lodge or launch forward and going to take a swipe. Uh, well, that's a nat 18 as this goblin lunges forward and is going to strike you with his scimitar, uh, dealing seven points of damage to you. Well, ow. Uh... Yep, sure takes seven points of damage. Okay. Um, all right, as you do that, uh, it's going to snarl in your face and kind of circle around so that it is between, um, or that you are between uh, Carmilla, who's been throwing hatchets, and it. Uh, and, Alessandra, it is your turn. All right. Um, so it's this point... Um, quick so question: can... Thrown weapons act the same as melee, right? For uh, bonuses, it should be bonuses? strength. Yes. Yeah. So, like, my bonus calculation: what goes into being added to an attack? Uh, usually, yes. I feel Perfect. like it can be dex if. Oh, if it's a finesse weapon. If it's finesse, like a throwing knife, that's what it is. Yeah, so I think you can do dex in the situations where it works better for a dex character. For instance, I'm pretty sure we do dex, or we did do dex for something is, else that I have. It is plus strength mod then, yeah. So, okay. all right, so yeah, you can you totally attack with strength. Uh, and with the ad additional uh, slope there, you can get right up next to Anthea at the top of the okay. slope. And is that curd next to Sindri? Uh, that is not. Curd is okay. is this boy to the north. Oh, okay, the one retreating up the hallway. Yeah. Okay. Um, so she's gonna get up there, and I guess I will try and 25 feet should be reasonable distance for a hand axe, I think. You can absolutely attack the one next to Sindri with your hand axe, for sure. Does it have a range on it? I just wanted to double check. Ooh, range is 2060. Okay. So 20 is. Uh, oh, it's 25. Uh, you know, I have a something good happens. It uh, it doesn't count as disadvantage. Okay. And now I'm out. I am gonna fling a hand axe at it then. Oh, should I actually, I have one more. All right, fling a hand axe. Let's do it. Pray for my dice, Chris, that I do not roll in that one, because <laughs> you're right in the way if I do. If I die, I die. All right, that's a 15 plus 5 is a dirty 20. That'll hit. Roll me damage. Uh, hand axe is our d6. Uh, so that would be 8 points of damage. All right. How do you do it? I think there's that vague kind of... It's not whistling because it's not like an arrow shape, but there's a bit of a sound it's... as it moves through the air. Yeah. And then just thunk. And I think it just hits right in the middle of the forehead. And you just... All right. All right. That is going to hit it directly in the forehead, uh, dropping it to the ground with uh, with a kind of a wet. <laughs> um, and with that, do you have anything else you'd like to do on your action? No, because you get nothing at level one as a paladin. This is true. All right, Ella, that is your turn. Uh, goblin number three is going to uh, look back and go, but I don't wanna. And Yemek, the boss, is going to sneer down and say, kill that one. I command. Do now. And he's going <laughs> to... Yeah. And he's going to launch himself down the escarpment and take a swing at Sindri. And Sindri, that's going to be a... Ooh, actually, hold on. It might not hit you. Might not hit you. It's going to be an 18. And down I go. Not necessarily. I could roll a 1. I did not. 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's going to be seven points of damage as he leaps down the escarpment and hits you directly in the chest uh, with the side of his scimitar, giving you a slash. Ow! All right. Uh, he is going to drop you to the ground and is going to let out a, I did it! I did it! <laughs> All right, um, and Lyric, it is your turn. Right, so I don't know if I can see what's happened quite yet because I'm still down below, but um, you'll hear. We're gonna <laughs> move, and probably sounds of a, another ally being wounded horribly again. So let's see, I can do go five, ten. Can I move through ally spaces? All right. Yes. Yes, you absolutely can. Yes. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Wait. 15, 20, 20, can I get close enough to Sindri to assist if he looks like he's down? Yes, you can. You just I can. Think, okay, cool. Well, I will uh, swap out my original plan to cast Cure Wounds on Sindri, because that seems like the best option here. Um, yep, that's my other spell slot. Uh, oh, are you freaking kidding me? What'd you get? Um... So I rolled a one for healing, but at least okay. I get to add my charisma bonus. So that should be a total of five. Okay. Ouch. I'm sorry. Could be better. All right. And... You're healing me. <laughs> and, uh, crap. I am now right square down, dab in the, like smack dab in the middle of this conflict, which is not ideal. Um, All right. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, semi panic look around and is going to uh, f flail and snap a finger and point at Carmilla and go, you do, uh, you know what to do. <laughs> and give her Bardic. Give her Bardic. <laughs> Why? Uh, thanks. <clears throat> All right, goblin number four uh, is going to snarl, take a couple steps forward and hurl a javelin at Lyric. <laughs> Ah, uh, ooh, Lyric, I'm going to spend a Hurt the Mortar reroll that. I'm going to reroll my Noxious Green Dice that can't be seen on camera. Just let me know if it's a 14. Uh, it is not. It is a 13. Uh, ooh, it it's going to whiz right between your horns. In fact, ooh. the stick is even going to go thuk, 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 thuk as it goes through. Oh, mommy. Um, and top of the initiative, uh, Curd is going to go... <laughs> I'm the boss! <laughs> it's going to do a battle cry and rush through, leaping around to try to skewer this one. And he's actually going to be able to hit him! Uh, that is going to be a... Yes, you heard the boss! <laughs> You're all one, one, one damage on that, so that's going to be uh, minus three. Um, so that's something. Uh, he lunges forward and he's gonna slash and there's gonna be this horrible, like, sucking noise a moment later as the goblin looks over. This goblin had this, like, ripe pear-shaped nose and suddenly there's gonna be a and a splat as it lands directly on Sindri's head. And then just starts sliding down the side and it's going to drop to the ground almost looking like a bisected uh, like anjo pear that same green gray texture and he's going to go you cut off my nose who cuts off someone's nose <laughs> the boss that's who <laughs> and Carmilla it's your turn <laughs> yes okay Bolstered he was aiming for the throat by... but <laughs> uh, bolstered by Kurds, um, heroics, and lyrics. That. Possible belief in her. She is going to draw her sword, focus, remember all of her training that she forced herself to do so that she could get away from her family, and try to do her new friends proud. Uh, and walk forward and get uh, the guy. Not the one that Kurd and Sindri and Lyric are all around, but the one that I, I, I believe the one that threw the javelin. Okay, the one that's up the, the escarpment, which is just the best word. They could have just yes. said the slope, 
but um yeah exactly <laughs> so, but they it's did an escarpment it's an escarpment so let me just check something real quick getting up that escarpment does that take a it's a 10 foot drop i have so, a climb speed you have a climb speed so never mind so you are going to be able just cool. to rush up it you're absolutely right I try to be as creepy as possible as I climb it to maybe intimidate this guy a bit. That sounds great. Make me an attack roll. Okay. All right, come on. You can do you it. Two I axes. believe in you. No waiting. No, I'm using my long sword. Oh, okay, good. Oh, I have determination. That is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. With determination? With determination. All right, roll me damage. Oh, Oh, thank God. I was like, I was gonna be like, wait, I have Bardic too. No, okay. You're so great. desperate. I love it. <laughs> um, I'm so, do you have no idea? I'm so, so upset. Okay. All right. There's two handed weapons. So if I roll a one or a two, I get to re-roll it. Uh, that's a five. Uh, so five plus five is 10. So 10 damage. Tell me how you do it. Oh my God. Okay. She draws her sword. She nods to Lyric and nods to Kurd. And then she sort of very slowly picks up speed and then animalistically crawls up this escarpment. Um, stands uh, her full, not terribly intimidating height, but over a goblin and stares down and says, Kurd is the boss and just decapitates him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. okay um yes you do yes you do all right the goblin's gonna goblin's gonna fall to the ground just absolutely like just deader than than he would have thought possible earlier that day this is definitely not a great day for that mr gobbo um and do you have anything else you'd like to do on your turn? I'm going to use my bonus action to second win because I didn't heal from that last damage. I think that's a great idea. Um, uh, all so right, Sindri, actually, you are I like... I don't get... No, actually, I'm lying. I don't get second win until second level. I was wondering. I was like, but that doesn't... I, I, I so trust I you, though. Uh, so you're going to just go, huh, I wish I was a higher level. And then, uh, Sindri, you have kind I, of like... I, I look very hungrily at this one, the one across, because I'm going to get some hit points from him. Nice. That sounds like a great idea. Um, Sindri, you have kind of like... You did not even hit the ground from where you got got stabbed. Uh, you kind of stumble a bit, catching yourself on the stairwell that leads up the escarpment. And... <laughs> Drink every time we say escarpment this evening. <laughs> all right so from where you are at the escarpment what do you do uh well i, I take my first drink uh and then i uh i think i can stand up as half my bonus action so dramatically i think i'm going to uh just swing my sword up as i stand up and try and get this the rest of the goblin that kurt has uh opened up for me so all right do it uh 16 16 is gonna be a hit uh, and that's five points of damage. All right, five points of damage is going to be enough to. Uh, how do you do it? Uh, I'm just going to like, like, uh, like stand up and drive my uh, my cutlass through his his throat. Uh, slide it, slam it down, uh, and say, "Got your nose." Uh, ah. And then, <laughs> thanks, lyric. And then run up the stairs. Okay. Um, if I can make it to 25 feet, let me just do some... 10, 15, you can get 20 feet, that'll take you right there. And I use my martial arts action to give a, uh, a big drop kick on this guy if I can. Okay, you absolutely can try. Love an attempt to do so. Um, oh, I just crit. Um, oh no, I don't have any goblins to throw in front of this. Oh no, I hope nothing bad happens to them. Uh, and that's going to be not that much because it's D4s. Uh, so that is seven points of damage. Seven points of damage. All right, you're going to crank into the side 
of that. Uh, Yimik is going to stumble back. His kind of like rotten visage um, looking quite battered and looking very surprised. And he's going to go, protect me, protect me. Uh Uh-oh. He's going to look around at all the dead goblins. Uh, uh, Want to give up? Uh, all right. Do you have anything else that you are doing with your action? Uh, that's that's all. So beautiful. Uh, and I did I did it for a want to give up to him, but we'll. Uh... You did, you did, but it's Anthea's turn before his turn, so he can't quite react. Anthea, it is your turn. What do you do? I'm gonna see how far I can get, like how close I can get up these stairs. You can absolutely get five, 10, 15, 20, 25. You have a speed of 25 five? or 30? 25. Okay, so you can get right next to Sindri. Up the es- escarpment with my tiny legs? Up the escarpment. Oh, okay. Right there? Uh, yeah, right there. You can get right there. Okay, let's see. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that... It's not going to hit everybody. Okay, it looks like it doesn't hit everybody because I want to go, oh, fire in the hole and um, toss another firebolt potion thing. All right. It looks a just fire... like a, like a, like Is this. Is it like a firebolt tonic? It kind of, but it's very small. So she's got like lots of them because it's a cantrip. Okay. So I was like, wow, I'm wasting a beaker every time. But no, they're very, very, very small. Okay, sounds good. Let's do it. Ooh, uh, I have to roll the hit. You do. Ah, I rolled a 22 to hit. Oh, yeah, that's going to hit a goblin. Yeah. Box. Absolutely All right. roll me damage. That's a d10. Six. Okay, he's going to try to <laughs> deflect it using another goblin. That is not something that can happen uh, because there are no other goblins right here. Uh, instead, he is going to be hit by that, uh, taking a huge welt of fire along his flesh as he lets out this, like, horrible yelp. Uh, are you doing anything else? Nope. I don't have ah! any. <laughs> um, Just plugging my ears. Uh, he is going to... All oh, right. It is going to be his I'm turn. Crouching. He is singed. Half of his face is melted. His eye is fused shut. And he's going to reach back and grab Sildar Hallwinter by the side of his tabard, drag him forward. You want to talk? Talk. We can talk. We can talk. Come closer. Human dies. Truce. Truce. And he's going to ready his action with his scimitar at Sildar's throat. Ella, it is your turn. What do you do? All right, so he's taken the human hostage. Yes, he has grabbed Sildar by the neck and kind of hauled him forward, kind of holding him there with his blade right there. Okay. At the side of his He's focused on Sindrian and Thea, though, right? He is, yes. Can I try and stealth the 10 feet forward and see if he'll notice me? Yeah, you can make me a make me a stealth roll with disadvantage because of your uh, probably not going to work. Probably not going to work. I want to attempt it. Just I'm just going to stealth forward and see if he notices me. If he doesn't, then I want to throw a hand axe <laughs> to try and take him out before he can hurt the human. Okay. Seventeen. That will be enough for you to stealth forward. Uh, Okay, so you will be right at the base of the escarpment. Okay. Don't roll in that one. Don't roll in that one. Uh, no, that's an 18 with my addition is over 20. Okay. The, this is going to be... So this is a hand axe. Make mm-hmm. Roll me your damage. Focus. Uh, that is going to be nine damage. Are you kidding me? Nine damage? I rolled max. He holds the blade up to Sildar's throat. Do it. We'll make a deal. Parley. Parley. Par. And as he's finishing that word, what happens? 
uh, that noise comes again over everybody's heads. And thunk. Okay. Uh, it is immediately followed uh, by the sound of his body colliding with the floor. Uh, he had eight hit points left. Oh, that's one way to do it, I guess. Uh, is Sildar gagged? Uh, Sildar is, uh, he is gagged and he is bound at the arms. He is very kind of badly, badly bruised. And I need to ask an important question. What does Sildar sound like? Because he looks just like... Um, I, I think he looks like the guy from It that plays the adult ooh. of Mike from Stranger Things. Really? You think that he looks like Barry? Yes. I think he looks like Christopher Maloney, but like fair. You know what? I'll give you. I'll give you the bear. I can't remember his name right now. Um, yeah, right. Will, Will, not Will. Will Coulter. No, but um. No. When you when you said it, I was I was immediately jumped to the thing, which gave me Kurt Russell. <laughs> and I was like, All right. Like, so. Wow. So how should he how should he talk? What are you thinking here? Well, I, I do want to see your Kurt Russell impression. Well, Kurt Russell is just kind of a gravelly John Wayne, so let's do it. Perfect. <laughs> I thought you'd never get here. Well, you did. Are you all right? He looks down at his battered body. Oh, just peachy. All right, let's get you out of here. Uh, S Sindri will uh, cut his bonds. Is it, are we all are we all okay? Uh, I'll look. Uh, Sindri will like kind of look look over the edge at everyone. Um, oh, I'm, if I'm we quite could, fine. Mm -hmm. I I think I just need a minute. Me too. Uh, uh, it, can, are, is everyone okay if we do a short rest? <laughs> Well, um, Carmilla is going to go into kind of the the top sort of northwest corner and find a bale of hay and just sort of sit and try to stay away from everyone because she's kind of hungry uh, and will just take a hit tie. <laughs> Did I imagine those berries from last night? No, no, those those you had berries last night. They were very real from a very real wolf. Mm -hmm. Do we have if any more of those? No, I'm afraid that you and Lady Elisabeth. If you're hurt, this one right here, he's going to nudge the uh, the goblin boss. Took a couple things of mine. Help well, yourselves. Uh, Sindri will help get his possessions back to him. All right. Um the goblin there on the side of his on the side of his hip you'll see that there is a pouch with two potions of healing as well as a small like gem pouch full of three quite well cut uh, agates or agates i don't remember how it's pronounced so three stones that are spelled say like agate. A, is it agate then three agates mm. Yeah, tag it. Um, looking at the others, you'll be able to pull together about 21 copper pieces strewn about. Nice. I'll go loot them. All right. Uh, I'll give him his gems back. Hmm. Help yourselves uh, to the potions. I think we could probably... <laughs> <laughs> Sindri is not fully injured, but not feeling great. Uh, I guess here, do you want lyric? Would you want to hold on to them, or do we okay. want to have someone else hold on to them? I'm. They would go with my collection, but maybe mm -hmm. we should spread the love. Perhaps Ella should carry some. Well, that's a good idea. Uh, pass one to Ella, and then. Uh, one to uh, Anthea, maybe? Sure. I'll just keep it right safe in my potion pouch. 
thank you. Jingle, jiggle a little bit. Tink together, I guess. They don't really jingle. They tink. Sildar, is uh, Gendron here? He's not with me. I think he might be up with the one that they call Flarg. Okay. Uh, what? Uh, is his, like, other equipment here? Like, his, like... It is, is not. He with us? They took the rest of my stuff. Brought it to Clark. Okay. Well, maybe we can get you some temporary equipment for now. And we can get the rest of your gear back to you. I can use a scimitar. Prefer a longsword, but this will work if needed. If you want, I can... If I do a bit of a rest, I I could probably give you some backup, but I'm pretty bruised up. I think backup is what we could use here. Uh, Sindri will pass one of the goblin scimitars after wiping it on their their cloak or their... Alessandra's going to go and reclaim her two hand axes and then use her ASMR ability of healing hands on herself. Wow. Uh, if, her hit points back to full. If we're taking a short rest, um, I'll, I'll use my one of my I'll use my hit die to get my hopefully four of my hit hit points back. Yes. Back since to we're full. taking a since we're taking a breather, boy, do I have a story for you. And as he says that, I think that's a good time for us to take a quick break. So, folks, <laughs> we'll be right back after this quick break. Don't go anywhere. everybody we're back this is the part of the program where we're going to talk to the chat also this is the point in time where uh i would love it if you hit exclamation mark fandelver is it ready christine it is exclamation mark fandelver to win a prize um that would be fantastic you'll be winning a dice scroll from bookworm games uh and please so... remember you will need the ability to whisper me lady liliana so that i can get your info from you hey how's it going that's how I whisper, but you can do it using your uh, your Discord features, uh, or not Discord features, your um, yeah, your whisper whisper features. Uh, so hey everybody, hope you're all doing well. This has been an awful night for rolls. This has been rough. Uh, oh party. boy, I rolled three nat ones. You did, and nothing above. Uh, sorry, I rolled two fifteens on my offhand attacks that don't get my bonuses to them. <laughs> you know, it's going to be super funny. We we used to get all these messages when Flair would like roll a lot of nat 20s and people would be like, oh, wow, that breaks stats. Nobody can roll that well. But nobody ever does it when people roll nat 1s all the time. You notice that? It's it's almost like yeah. people hate success. <laughs> yeah. <exactly. laughs> like me rolling consistently six or lower on those animal handling checks is truly a big mood. Just like, Sindri has never dealt with wolves before. Does not know how to deal with them. You just what pet. A... If not friend, if not friend, yeah, exactly. why friend shaped? Exactly. Correct. Has not been out of a big city or on the ocean much. So you know this is this makes sense. Just be friendly animals. <laughs> Get bit by all the animals. All right. So um, and as some of you may see, uh, lyric is not presently here uh or at least amy's not presently here uh amy is feeling a bit under the weather um 
they managed to make it through the first half of game, but uh, they are not going to be finishing up the session. We're going to put them on autopilot, uh, which is going to be nice and fun. So Amy, I hope you're feeling better. Go get those incredibly heavy uh, horns off your head and rest up because this is the problem with people with office jobs. Office colds are a thing. And uh, they're everywhere, folks. Much uh, love to Amy. Much love to Amy. All right, so um, is anybody else looking forward to anything? There's like a bunch of great stuff coming our way really soon. And uh, I'm trying to think, is Krista's not in that? Oh, Amy, no? Nobody no. here's in that. Never mind. <laughs> um, we have something really cool that I get to announce in November that is coming in Ooh. January. And I'm very excited, folks. It's requiring a lot of research in order to put together. It's going to be a lot of fun. I think you're going to like it. Um, also is... Oh, uh, I have been requested for some uh, costuming help for that. <laughs> so You yes, have, like everybody... Oh, do you have an idea of something that I could wear as the DM? Because right now I'm just wearing a Henley. Um, because... For this game or for the... No, for, I think a Henley is perfectly future. fine for a, for a Dungeon Master of Fandelver. This is what all the yes. all the plebs are wearing anyway. Um, but uh, no, uh, for for the thing that shall that not be... That secret project? The secret project. Yes, yeah, so I'll have to get some more details from you because it's only been uh, one person that has asked me about it. So I only oh, know... Oh, really? I thought, that, I thought the other person was asking too. Oh, sorry. Yes. So yes, there has been two people that have asked me but I haven't gotten a ton, a ton of details about the actual game itself. So I've just gotten character questions. So, okay. Fair enough. So yeah, talk to me about it. We'll, we'll make some, uh, yeah. So, but that, yeah, so I, I've gotten that vibe that was yeah. just messaged. Vibe check. Uh, yes, exactly. But we'll, uh, we'll have to, we'll have to see what, uh, what we're looking for. That sounds good. All right. Oh, so uh, besides that, folks, raids. It's been awesome. And so many raids. I love all of you raiders. Thank you so much for raiding. Um, folks, uh, this is episode two of Fandelver and Below, but this game is going to be going a very long time. Uh, but if you're looking for more D&D content this week, you can check out the following. Uh, tomorrow night, we have our homebrew game, Shards of Nern, is going back on again because uh, it runs bi-weekly. You definitely come out and check that out at 7 p.m. Pacific on Wednesday. Uh, so long as our, our wizard, our sorcerer, I suppose, uh, has her voice back, we're going to be running Dragonlance Shadow of the Dragon Queen as we are nearing the end game for that it's almost been running for a year which is amazing uh and then uh this weekend uh i am recording the first episode of our old gods of appalachia game for our patreon uh so patreon is one of the ways that you can support us the most and which where we can support you back with tons of content so consider joining uh this weekend we also have what else do we have this weekend i swear, I swear we had something else going on didn't we I feel like we must but entirely i know there are always there's always something going on there's always something um the the one thing that i want to say and i will reiterate it before the end of stream um so th this week is fandelver we're not doing fandelver and below next week because it is a holiday and uh some people have family commitments it is it is the holiday of family commitments that is not christmas you know which one it is uh and uh some people uh like made the choice to have a baby that they have to go show off at Thanksgiving. So there you go. Good job, Caitlin and Chris. Way to clone yourselves. Um, other Chris, but yes. Well, not that. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my just god. Gonna say, just gonna say. Chris, did you have a baby? <laughs> uh, you know what? I have a series of large adult sons that I take to rugby practice with me, uh, but I don't need to show them off at Thanksgiving. <laughs> You do sometimes have to clean up after them, though, I bet. You know, they're very self-sufficient. They take care of themselves. They just need a ride in hot chocolate after the game. Aww. That is That's heartwarming. Adorable. That is yeah. pretty adorable. <laughs> it's pretty adorable. Um, so, Chris, um, yeah, the other Chris. This game has, so, it's it's literally me and Amy flanking all of the C names, three of which are Chris names in this game. That's true. Oops, all Chris's. Oops, all Chris's. We Oops, can get Chris's. that we can get that going. Like we can get a four-person Chris game going. I'm I feel sure. like we should do that at least once for extra life. 
that's yeah. a, an amazing extra life option. what do you guys think so extra life is coming next month uh which means that we are going to be doing a it's going to be super good guys you're going to love it you're going to love the way you roll uh but i am curious whether or not uh i was going to run uh dungeons against humanity where i run a D D game just using cards against humanity cards oh my god that's amazing so like whenever you do a roll hold on i'm gonna pull a random cards against humanity deck out and just see listen if i can bring cricket back i'll i'd be happy to do that oh god you totally could um okay so Man. you can because you can go online and just play online so like literally uh as the mom of five rambunctious boys i'm no stranger to tentacles uh the boy scouts of america an octopus giving seven hand jobs and smoking a cigarette <laughs> Saying everything is okay when everything is clearly not okay. These are all options Ooh. for D and D. I feel like the the mm. the octopus smoking is like totally a long suffering patron. A horror lock of something. Yeah, it's just like the, on our Patreon. What's the, one? the patron, the the patron. No, the patron of the deep. Isn't a patron that a, of the a, deep. A warlock patron now. Yeah. Can a patron of the deep only have eight warlocks? I mean, that's a great, like, uh, plot mm -hmm. point. You have to kill one of... If you want to gain their power, you have to kill one of their other... Uh... Oh, shit, that's sick. That's sick. Mm -hmm. All right, we got Krista's next concept. Yeah. <laughs> Leveling up to be able to. Yeah. I is, want to is be a, a warlock. Is a, uh, a sorcerer that wants to be a warlock, and so is just, like, Highlander-style hunting down other warlocks. They're going to be only Eight. <laughs> eight. <laughs> And they either love each other or detest each other. I mean, that's uh, family, though. Restart sense. I did. I I did have someone pitch the idea of a very high level campaign where a whole bunch of like what would be patrons end up coming together that all have to rescue their warlock who has signed deals with all of them. <laughs> oh God, the Constantine method. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> you can't claim my soul. I've sold it many times. <laughs> exactly and then and then all of those come together like crap and someone's kidnapped them or something and so all these like 20th level like gods all have to come like an arch fey and an under the deep sub cthulian thing that's fair. very good <sighs> all right i'm gonna drink some of this awful fanta black which is supposed to dye your tongue but it doesn't really do it i'm not gonna lie this stuff is awful. You like it, don't you, Krista? I do. I, it's not my favorite, but I actually what do don't you say mind it. Tastes it. like it tastes like nerds, like the 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 little candies that look like uh, pond pebbles. I get sweet tarts, but well, okay, yeah, okay. So, the, but well, because it a little bit of both chalky because it kind of yeah. tastes like rocket slash smarties that's well. why i was saying it tastes like sweet tarts because it has that chalky taste but i do yes. get the nerd the 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 bouquet of of nerds yes. about it it's it starts as nerds and then the it. aftertaste is chalky which is like how is a drink taste chalky i don't know yeah it tastes dry well i mean i'm gonna we're ha we're like robin's in the chat right now screaming about wine tasting dry so there we go <laughs> yes yeah like why is dry an option why for is a dry liquid? a flavor <laughs> Yeah, I think exactly. It would be the opposite. All right. Um, you know what else is dry? Our humor. Uh, and uh, I think it is time for us to head back into game. Y'all ready for this? I'm going to yawn one more time. Ooh. Okay. It's been a long day for me, folks. I hope it has been a. There's a cat. Gratuitous cat shot. <laughs> All right. Uh, what was the other thing? Krista, were you asking me that in relation to? The, well, you said there was something else on the weekend, and I mentioned I wasn't sure if you'd mentioned Dreams of Arcos. So Arcos is next weekend. Oh, we've got the public release of Panic at the Citadel episode two on Sunday. Uh, That's what's happening this weekend. So come, come watch, uh, come watch one of uh, the players run the game. See how hard it is, and watch. That's the episode where I get hit in the crotch repeatedly. Spoilers. <laughs> in Spoilers. character, out of character. Yeah. <laughs> <You know. laughs> it's LARPing. <laughs> it's a living getting punched by a mantis shrimp in the dick listen some people a lot pay a lot for that kind of content they do <laughs> all right 
Um, so folks, I think, uh, it is time for us to head back into game here on Dork Tales. You all ready for this? All right. That sounds Let's do good. Do it to it. Yep. Okay. Hello and welcome back to Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk here on Dork Tales. Um, so as you take a break, Krista, I do want to remind you though, Second Wind actually is a first level. It's, uh, oh, it's really? Action Surge. Action Surge is the second level. Oh, okay. That's why I, I thought I had put it incorrectly on my first ca character sheet. No, you're amazing. And you do everything right the ahead. first time. <laughs> sure. I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> take it. Nobody else is going to give it to you. That's fair not, point. Not me, not X. All right. And with that, ah! um, we, we head back into game here. You find yourselves sitting amidst the destroyed bodies of your goblinoid, um, well, the kidnappers of your friend Sildar. Sildar slumps to the floor, exhausted. Boy, do I have a story for you. You were coming up here to meet with Gundren, right? Uh, that's right. Mm -hmm. Well, he wanted me to come with him to uh, make sure that he was safe. Fat lot of good that did. For my purpose, I was coming up here looking for a friend of mine. Well, person I know at least. Known as Iarno Albrecht. He's a human wizard. Member of the Lord's Alliance. Disappeared after arriving in Phandalin. I have a feeling that... Yarno's the kind of guy who can assist Gundren in... opening the... How much should Gundren tell you about why we're here? Not very much. As much as Gundren never really wants to tell anyone about things, as little as possible. Mm -hmm. He hired us for the provision job. He didn't tell us anymore. Well, you seem like you're pretty far into this with me, so... What do you know about the way of Echo Cave? Anybody who wants to can make what? me a history roll. Ooh, exciting. I oh, I have history. I <laughs> shit you not. I am not proficient, but I did roll a 20. <gasps> yeah, okay. hell yeah. I am proficient, and I got a 14. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm proficient, and I got an 8. I got a 10, and got a I don't eat things. Um, so you will recognize the name, Anthea, but will have mm -hmm. difficulty placing it. Um, however... Um, what you will know, Lady Alessandra, from your research is that Wave Echo Cave is a legendary, um, a legendary, uh, well, it is the lost mine of Fandelver. Uh, it's a legendary place, uh, that is said to exist and was lost throughout the ages. Sindri, what you will know with that nat 20, because you were formerly a pirate, which means that you know your treasure when you hear about it. The Wave Echo Cave was, well, it was... A place of great mineral wealth, but also great magical power. Spellcasters allied themselves with the dwarves and gnomes of Fandilin to channel and bind the energy of that location into a great forge called the Forge of Spells. It was magic. It was powerful. And for centuries, it, well, it's been lost. But there are still rumors of buried riches. None have found it, of course. It's been lost for hundreds of years. That greedy old bastard found the Spellforge. He and his three I... brothers. They found the entrance. The side of the Fandel were packed. You're, you're, you're not pulling my leg here. I'm not pulling your leg. Gundren, Tharden, and Nundo. Nundro. Found it. Do they tell anyone about this? Or just... They told me. Apparently, he had some type of map. But... 
Wow. So a Amy's not here, uh, but from last session, uh, I, I remember her stepping on the map case on the side of the... You do. Okay, so, so Lyric will pipe up and say, that explains the map case. What was there just the one map or did they make multiple maps? I don't know. I know the Gundern had one. Clark, the one who runs this cave, had orders to waylay Gundren. I heard them talking about the spider. Someone that sent word to bring Gundren to him. Is that thing safe? He points at uh at Kurd. Yeah. Kurt's gonna look behind him. What? Yeah, Kurt's Kurt, Kurt's the new boss here. He'll uh once we get rid of uh he's he's our local guide. Mm -hmm. He huh. speared one of the other goblins trying to rescue you too. Well thanks then. I appreciate it. Look, I don't know who this spider is, but the goblins. The goblins took the map. I think that Clark sent the map and... Maybe Gundren. Maybe he still got Gundren. Mm. But I have a feeling it's out to the leader of the Kragmaws at a place called Kragmaw Castle. Hmm. Yeah, Kragmaw Castle. Mm. Mm. They take Dwarf there too. Me saw. Okay, well, that answers that. Hmm. Should we perhaps then be going to this castle now? If we've got you out of here, mm -hmm. then there was, well, Clark, do you need us to kill your bugbear friend or do you want to help us uh, go get some more treasure? Deal is deal. Right. You say kill. We kill. I suppose mm. that's fair. It... What's the deal? Yeah, what's the deal? And do you think that you feel up to it? Well, the lyric attended to the worst of my injuries. Yeah, I suppose so. Well, I, I uh, sorry. Um, Kurt, <laughs> how many uh, goblins did you? How many for, How many cousins did you have here? No friends, just cousins. Uh, yeah. Let's see. There's uh, Milok and Tablo and Yuk and Thuk and Dinbuck. Uh, there's one, two, three, four, uh, maybe seven? Five, seven five, two? Left or, se seven left or how many did we, or that, that including mm, ones we killed? Maybe seven more? Okay. We actually almost matched them in numbers. Plus wolf, plus wolf, plus ripper. What's a ripper? Big wolf. Oh. Okay. So we almost have the match in numbers. Yeah. This this place is was this an old mine at all? No, just cave. Mm. Damn. Good cave, right? Soon mine. Going to redecorate. Put window there. Doesn't that defeat the purpose of it being a cave? Hmm. Hmm. Let me think about this. Okay. Alessandra, what do you think? Um. Well, I suppose if we promise we should keep continue and finish the job. It also means that there's not going to be anyone behind us trying to chase us down. That's true. These guys as well. have been, these goblins have been doing raids up and down the coast for a while now. We'd be doing a service. That would aid the locals. Mm. So, if we're up for it, I think we should get moving then. You got two potions of healing there. If I can get on my feet, I can. Do my best to fight alongside of you. Should we try, perhaps, um, uh, 
How are you with a bow? Pretty good. But perhaps we send you and Anthea up the back entrance we found, and we can make a frontal assault and mm. they can attack from the rear. We could do that. I'm going to put my, my stone in my pocket, though. Boop, and the light's going to go out. And if that happens, then uh, I, I need to hold on to somebody. I'll need to hold on to somebody, too. I can't see in the dark. Oh. I mean, we could have the light, but then everyone's going to see us coming. We're going to be a target. I can also guide someone. Oh, there's one more thing that you should know in case I die in here. Oh. I don't know what the goblins are into, but I saw a weird one. There was one with an elongated head. Like, conical. Like a noble lady's hat. hat. Gave me a bad feeling, but the Kregmaws, they didn't seem to to know it. It whispered, hold on, it's a... You're not what Ruxithid wants. Ruxithid? Ruxithid. Hmm. Ruxithid. And whispered it to me before leaving the ambush group. Ruxithid, that doesn't sound familiar. But I guess if we chase down Gundren with the spider, we might learn more then. Common spelling, right? R U X I T H I D. Yeah. Does that sound like Ruxithid, or does it sound like Ru Rushithid? I like Ruxithid. Ruxithid. Ruxithid? Okay, we'll go with Ruxithid. All right. You get me out of here. You take me to Fandelver. I'll give you fifty gold each. Wow. Well. We're, we looked at him there anyway, so let's all get back alive. Yeah, if I make it back alive, I can make sure you get that money. Then the drinks are on me. No, I you already had me. <laughs> okay. Hold on one you second. You said you hate to ask? <laughs> He's going to kind of look at you. He does not pick up on that cue quite yet, but he's uh, going to kind of look you up and down and be like, all right, Had good to have a strong, strong arm at my back. I, uh, I hate to ask, though, but does anybody have any healing? No. Oh. Uh, I guess we have the, po- we have the potion. Mm-hmm. Yes. Perhaps you should take that. All right, I'll Preventative take that one. healing is always better. Well, Someone hang on to the other one for me. One, one moment. You should probably hold on to that. That's a little more easy to take in an emergency, right? Yeah, okay. Um, so she's just going to kind of... Luckily, the only thing I can do as a paladin at level one is lay on hands. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Yeah. Can you give him can restore can you... five hit points. Okay, he now has six hit points. <laughs> Woohoo! Because <laughs> they had him they had him beaten down to one hit point, and I'm assuming that he mm-hmm. has no long rests or short oh, rests okay. remaining. I'm assuming okay, that being fair. battered and beaten meant he could not short rest because he was out of hit dice. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. No, he has way more hit points than that, folks. Um, I wish. I wish. Oh, actually, here. I usually just save it for when, you know, someone just needs it. It's specially formulated so that you don't choke on it. But in any case, I have uh, this for you. And she'll give him a little potion of uh, cure wounds. Oh, okay. Go ahead, roll it. Thank you. I like to keep it in my back pocket. Um, that's going to be nine points. Oh, damn. Okay, he's at 15 hit points. Now he's he's half healed and ready to rock. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll oh, stand and uh, here, have this. 
uh, she'll take off her long bow. <laughs> Not healing. And we'll okay. take off her bow and hand him her bow and 20 arrows. Okay. Uh, he will happily take that um, and uh, will give you a nod and say, let's get to it. Um, so, okay. So who can I follow? Well, why don't you use the light right now? I, I don't think anyone else is down here. Okay. I But perhaps should... So should we take Sildar and Anthea and take them back to the chute? And then the four of us will go around further and then a Kurd can lead us further down the round. Does that make sense? Or should we all just go the same way? The only thing is, what if there's still stuff between where we are and Clark? Yeah, more s- point. more snakes more, or something, too. More snakes or something. Or we, we run into Ripper. Thing. I like the idea of coming at them from both sides. I just, I just, yeah, or Ripper, yeah. I'm just nervous. That's all. I, th- I think you you are very wise, and both of you, and make good points. So let us, um, perhaps, yes, Cynthia, put your stone away. Um, she'll pull out a little bit extra of her rope, um, and hand it to and Anthea and Sildar. Say, um, you can follow me, and we will make our way down. What's everyone's passive perception? Okay, thank you. Ten, twelve. Twelve. I miss my Twelve. twenty-one. Because <laughs> oh. I'm I'm a million years old. So uh, passive perception is just your your pa- is 10 perception plus, your... plus ten. Yeah. Okay, so it's fifteen for me. Um, Sindri, as you're standing there, you're going to hear the sound of scrabbling at the bottom of that ramp. They're onto us, I think. Uh, S- Sindri will like uh coast down the escarpment. Drink. Okay. Uh. And start like beat like hustling after it. Okay. Uh, uh, and with your dark vision, you will see a pair of wolves and two goblins at the bottom of that ramp, looking around at the dead snake that's lying there. Do they? Are they looking up? Up this way? Uh they are now. Fuck! All right. Do they? <laughs> they found us. <laughs> ah, all right. Let's roll initiative, everybody. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. And she'll take her stone out. Okay. Problem solved. Fair point. Okay, so this is actually very fortunate for you Ooh. in the long run. Wolves. Okay. 13. Let's re-roll. Okay. And then let's roll for Sildar. Oh, damn. Sildar got a 19. All right, initiative time. Well, he has a zero dex bonus, so that's great. I okay. love when we over we overthink things, and then uh, the problems are solved. If we think about it enough, the problems will come to us. This is true. Okay, so Sildar uh, is first followed by uh, Gob One. Then it is a tie between Gob 2 and Anthea. Then a tie between Gob 3 and Ella. Okay, boop, boop, boop. Uh, then it is. Uh, then it is Sindri. Wolf, uh, Carmella, Tidewolf Wolf, then it is Wolf 2, and then Lyric. Oh, and somewhere in there is Curd. I'm going to just put Curd with this wolf. All right, sounds great. All right, they are going to let out a shriek. Uh, as they see you and let their wolves off their chain. And as they do that, uh, and Thea, you're going to just pull your stone out of your pocket again? Mm-hmm. Because they see okay. us anyways. 
I want to okay. see them too. Sounds good. Uh, Sealdar. It is Sealdar's turn. Uh, he will uh, step down, cross. Let's see, what is that? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. He's not going straight there. He will draw back and using uh, the longbow will notch an arrow and take two shots against the wolf that is running up. Uh, he will have partial Ooh, cover. But... Two shots. Yeah, all right. Uh, the one's with disadvantage, but that's still something. The first one's a 19. And the second one is a 13. That's not going to be quite enough against the wolf. Okay, uh, and longbow. Okay, uh, the arrow is going to slam into the side of that wolf, uh, doing a total of two points of damage, but hey, it's something. As or, well, happens. All right, uh, that is Sildar. Goblin number one uh, is going to rush around the corner from the north. And let's... Swing back over here. Uh, he's going to swing back over from the north, lunging itself out at Sindri. Uh, Sindri, that's going to be uh, a 22 to hit you for four points of damage as it rushes forward and slashes you across the thigh. Okay, so uh, that is goblin number one. Uh, Anthea and goblin number two are tied. What are you going to do, Anthea? Oh, my goodness. Um, I'm going to step forward a little bit so I can kind of get into the fray. Just kind of get up beside Sildar. And I want to try to throw a fireball at... Firebolt, sorry. Firebolt at the um, goblin who just came in from the north. Please, Sounds no fireball. No fireball. No fireball. Not yet, anyway. I don't think I get Honestly, it, actually. Honestly, at this point... <laughs> Just wipe, just start over. All right, so let me just... try. And... We can all play Oops, sorry about that. That was going to be a 20 to hit. Nice. All right, that is going to be a hit. All right. I got so many of these. It's going to be eight, uh, eight points of damage. Eight points of damage? All mm -hmm. right. Uh, that uh, is the one that's attacking Sindri, right, that you're attacking? The one that's attacking Sindri, correct? Perfect. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, describe to me what happens. The firebolt is going to lash out right above Sindri's head, smashing into that one. And yep. what happens? Uh, it's gonna catch him in the chest and kind of just explode. Uh, he's gonna, ex or yeah, she's going to explode with a little <laughs> coating uh, the wall with guts and gore. Um, all right, well, Goblin number. Really well. Uh, goblin number three is going to take a step forward and is going to hurl a javelin up at Sindri with partial cover. Uh, that is going to be a two when all things are said and done as the javelin kind of sticks in the side of the ramp on the way up. And Thea, do you have a bonus action? You do not, right? Okay. No, nothing. Sorry, I shook my head. That's okay. Uh, goblin number three and Ella are tied. What do you do? Um, I think Ella will try and lean around the edge of the corridor mm -hmm. and huck another hand axe and then le walk, lean back around the corridor. Sounds good. You can, you can definitely lean around and take a, uh, take a throw at one of the wolves here or at one of the goblins at the bottom. I'm going to go for one of the wolves because they're a closer, more present threat currently. Sounds good. Uh, so that is going to be a 19 to hit. Uh, that's going to hit. Roll me damage. Woohoo! Max damage. That's nine damage. Nine damage. Uh, that is exactly how many hit points it has left. Uh, your axe is going to embed itself in the thick fur of that snarling wolf, uh, and it is going to go down. Uh, the goblin behind it is going to launch itself up the, up the, uh, the ravine. 5, 10, 15, 20, which is just enough to climb up next to Sindri uh, and is going to take a swipe at you, Sindri, but it is fighting uphill, which means that is going to be disadvantage. 
and I almost, I rolled double 17s, and then the 17 rolled into a 7. Uh, it is going to lunge up at you uh, and try to take a swipe. Now, normally, fighting downhill is not, but this specifically says that when you are fighting the snake on the slope, it is disadvantage. So I'm going to say that you are probably similar. Uh, it's going to take a swipe at you, Sindri, uh, and the blade is going to go right between your legs, slashing just a little bit of your poncho right next to the your inner thigh. Why? <laughs> uh, Sindri, it is your turn. Uh, I'm going to uh, uh, just like, like clutch up my thigh where I was bleeding from before. Uh, and try and make a swing. Uh, does a 15 hit with my short sword? It absolutely does. Roll me damage. Man. Sorry, boss. It's gone forever. Yep. Doesn't... It's gone. That is... Five points of damage. Five points of damage. Your blade is going to bite thickly into this snarling, mohawked goblin's throat, uh, but it is still on its feet. What if I martial arts and kick it in the chest down the hill? I think that might be a great option. Go ahead. Yeah. I'll do that. So I rolled an 18 to hit. Oh, that'll hit. Roll me damage. Uh, and that's uh, eight points of damage. Boom. Eight points of damage as it tumbles head over heels down the hill. Uh, the last goblin at the bottom of the hill is going to snarl up at you in surprise. Uh, uh, I I had the high ground and I'm going to step around the corner a little bit. So I'm not going to be eating every single attack in the way. That sounds yeah, great. Just like that. It snarls, and a wolf is going to lunge up the hill. Uh, Carmilla, it is acting on the same initiative as you. So that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. It is only able to scrabble up next to Sindri, but uh, I'm going to say that its movement gives you the advantage on actions. What do you cool. want to do? Uh, I will step forward and, uh, again, focus. Try to remember forms. I will take a two-handed swipe with her long sword. All right, do it. Oh, thank criminy. It's, yeah, okay, 17. 17 is going to be a hit. Roll me damage. Yeah. Oh, thank goodness. Come on, here it comes. Uh, and that is a uh, plus strength is an eight, an eight. Eight damage. Eight damage. All right. Uh, that is not enough to take it down, but it is a resounding wound into the side of its flank. Uh, it is going to make an attack against you as it does so with a uh, disadvantage because of the slope. Uh, and that is going to be a miss. The the leap at you with a mixture of that and the slash of your blade is going to send it careening into the wall where it is going to miss its attack. Ooh. Ooh, does it like jump at me and I like block it with a sword blade so it cuts into its mouth? It does. Blood is going to spray over your hands. It smells sweet. I know. Hmm. Okay, and Lyric. Uh, what is Lyric going to do? Krista, you are going to be playing Lyric for combat purposes while Amy is away feeling a little sick. So, what does Lyric do? Lyric is going to sniff the air and go, Oh, I can smell you from here. Uh, and cast Vicious Mockery on the uh, goblin that's down by the water. Because they think... only have to hear you. Oh, God, really? Okay. Yep. Wisdom save. Uh, that is a five, my friend. I'm going to say that fails. Uh, okay, psychic four, damage. Uh, that's two psychic damage, and it will have disadvantage on its next attack roll. Beautiful. It's going to, like, let out a briark! Briark! of complaint down at the bottom of the hill. And uh, top of the initiative, uh, it is Sildar's turn again. Sildar is going to line up a shot at this wolf uh, and is going to put it out of its misery by just from 10 feet away, taking one of your arrows and shooting it directly between the eyes, uh, dropping it to the ground. Uh, goblin number two is dead, um, which means... Sorry, I forgot the lyric also has a couple bardic inspirations left. So uh, oh, she's going to give one to Sindri. Okay. Thanks, Lyric. Good. Lyric will say, good job not getting skewered that time. That sounds like a Lyric thing to say. Uh, yeah, all right. that does. Uh, and Thea, it is your turn because your companion goblin is dead. Oh, okay. Um, um, 
let's see, she's going to kind of run forward a little bit so that she can see what's going on because I've got tiny legs. It's true. So looking down and, there. Uh, yeah. Now, so yes. this goblin is still in a little bit of cave mouth light at the bottom mm. of the hill. Oh, oh, I see him. Okay. Um, how far is it, though? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. It's a little twisty turny, but I still get a good kind of angle. 30 feet. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, let's, what's my range? 120 feet. Let's go sure. for another one. Let's do it. I got so many of these. I said, let's do it. Let's go. And she's going to toss it. Maybe it's another good one. All right. And it's going to be 18 to hit. An 18 to hit is enough, mm -hmm. even with uh, nice. with some of the difficulty added for uh, partial obscurement. So go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Roll me a d10. What'd you get? Eight again. Eight again. Uh, mm. There's going to be a sizzle as the goblin's corpse falls into the rushing water. Oh, it was a good one again. All right. With that, those goblins are dead. And their wolves are as well. What do you do? Oof. All right, perhaps we should move. Oof. Yeah, which direction? Oh. Good work. We gotta press in. Use it while we can. Um, reclaim the arrows while we go, and uh, I guess uh, just do a quick scramble over the bodies and see if they're they've left anything there. Oh yeah, I can do that. I'm pretty fast, even though I have very small legs. All right, uh, I want you to do me a favor and make me an investigation check as you as you search the bodies. I'm a little distracted. Actually, that wasn't that bad. Uh... Oh, that was actually really good. And a dirty 20. I forgot I was good at investigation. A dirty 20? Nice. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, looking through their bodies, you are going to find that there are an additional uh, 17 copper coins between them. As oh. well as a very fancy leather dog collar on one of the wolves that says Fluffy on the tag. Oh, this one had a name. Uh, you th are pretty sure it's not. Like, this looks like a fancy one that an actual dog would have. Oh, well maybe we can find the dog that used to... Maybe we can find the old owner. Um, she's gonna take it off and... That, that's a nice thought. We'll definitely try and find their owner. Hmm... I'll also yeah. slide down the hill slope down there to go retrieve my hand axe. Sounds good. When um, Anastasia's so not looking, I'll uh, like try and share a look with like uh, <laughs> probably Carmilla about the dog. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, Carmilla will kind of lean in and go, she is very, very smart and very, very wise, but is also kind of naive in some ways, but it makes her a better person, I think. It's a good point. Maybe I should stop being so cynical. Uh, and then I'll I'll surf down the hill after uh, uh, Alessandra. Okay. Uh, with that, uh, Sildar will follow behind and say, we're going to need some more light. I can't see much around here. Got anything bigger yes. than that? Uh, I think, hang on, I think I have torches. Hmm. You would in your Dungeoneering kit, for sure. Yeah. Or your Monster um, Hunter kit. Yeah, I've got a Dungeoneering, so I'm pretty sure that it's in there. Uh, yeah, we'll light some torches. I, I believe the time for uh, stealth has gone um, here. Um, I'll give a torch to... Um, mm. one. I'll give one to uh, Anthea and one to Sildar. Thank you. That's fair. Let's get moving. Okay. All right. Uh, so Sindri will stay a little bit behind because he's oh, he's still a bit injured. Okay. What's marching order? 
So stepping up ahead, you can see that there is a wooden bridge that connects across um, this um, uh, this moving waterway. On the other side, it looks like a cavern splits into two locations, a tunnel that kind of heads through the middle of the cavern and one that kind of wraps around along with the waterway to the north. Which way do you go? Is, is Kurd still with us? Kurd is still with you, yeah. Kurd, what is fastest way to... Hey, bo both guard. the same way. Tunnel faster. Then go to the tunnel. Mm. All right, what's your marching order? Uh, I don't have to have the rope anymore. Um, so, uh, uh, Sildar's got the bow... So let's have him at the back. Does that sound fair to everybody? That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll stay closer to Sildar for now. Okay, to... sounds good. So, Carmilla, you going in first? I'll go in first. Um... I'll come right after. Anthea's feeling pretty good about herself right now. Yeah, <laughs> Alessandra will follow up as well. Are you So, um, so okay. let's just let's do it. And then Lyric will hang out at the back with uh with sildar and yeah probably and kurt holds her hand kurt, kurt, will, <laughs> kurt will hold your hold her hand kurt's gonna hang out in the center he's all he's all like amped up from his uh from his potion all right uh so yeah. with that you are going to charge your way through the center of this map as you do we head into <clears throat> In this cavern ahead of you is filled with two large pools of water. A narrow waterfall high in the east wall feeds the pool, which is probably the only reason that many of these creatures did not hear your advance earlier when you got in your fight before. However, that's not going to stop it now, as one goblin at the edge of your vision notices you and lets out a sharp shriek. From there, you can see the stream to the north kind of flows alongside, uh, giving you kind of um, nowhere to run to the north aside from that that passageway. Um, you'll also see that a small passageway leads up several steps, about 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 fifteen feet of them, kind of sharply up from where that goblin is likely to Clark's, well, his throne room. And with that, I think it's time for us to make our big initiative roll. Let's do it. Oh boy. Let's do it. All right. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. So that's. And then Sealdar. Oh no. And then. Curd. And then I've got. That's a good one. And then I've got. Uh, and where is. Where's his boy? Wait, is he just a normal wolf? Two wolves, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, just double checking this. Burr, 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 burr. Oh, River's just a normal wolf. That's dumb. I don't like that. He just gets a name. He just yeah, gets a he's, name. He was once was fluffy, now is Ripper. He's just a poodle. Oh god, that's happening. <laughs> that's going in the Ah no, no, very scary. <laughs> Very scary. Standard poodles are vicious sons Standard of bitches. Standard scary. All right. All right. So, um, uh, all right. So let's jump into it. So top of the initiative. Uh, let me just check. So you've got a dex of two. Okay. So uh, I have Lyric with a 21. I have... Uh, is that an 18? No. Is that an 18 for you, Chris? Okay. Yes, it is. Okay. And then that is an 18 for... Oh, my God. This is going to be a cluster. Um, okay. <laughs> so, uh, there's a four-way tie between uh, Sindri, Carmilla, Clark, and Ripper. Oh, geez. Uh, then it goes down to... Uh, to Goblin 1, uh, which is the one who spotted you and yelped. Then it goes down... That's, he's not going to last long enough to get a turn, probably. Uh, then it goes to Alessandra. Then it goes to... Uh, then it goes to... Uh, to... Curd. 
then it goes to goblin two then it goes to sealdar then it goes to anthea then it goes to uh, goblin three and goblin four all right uh and with that let's begin all right, Carmela, you'll see this one lets out a sharp yelp in front of you. Uh, Lyric at the back is uh, has a straight shot. What's the distance on um, on Vicious Mockery? I was just about to check that. Oops. I went back on the wrong screen. That back. Vicious Mockery, uh, 60 feet. Uh, five, I don't think 10, I'm 15, quite close enough. I think you... You are oh, yeah, 50, 55. 55 feet. Let's do it. Beautiful. So she's going to say... <sighs> yeah, you sound like a puppy. Okay, do it. Uh, that is going to be... Uh, what's my DC? Uh, I got a 13. DC. I don't think that's enough. Um, uh, yeah, 14 is this. Is the 14. Same. I had a 14, but a minus one wisdom. It does. Uh, <laughs> it does an awful thing. Um, so, uh, that is going to be, give me Vicious Mockery. Three damage, and it is, uh, and, and, uh, disadvantage on its next attack. All right, um, that is going to be there. Uh, so, uh, because Clark and Ripper are not in the combat yet, uh, that means Carmilla and Cindy, you're up. Who goes first? Uh, do you want me to go first since I'm at the front? Or do you want to go, Cindy? Do you have something you want to do? No, why don't you take the lead and I'll follow up. Okay, cool. Um, in that case, I'm pretty sure I can make it to this guy. I think you absolutely can. Uh, I'll go here. And again, focusing very hard and concentrating on being able to swing the sword and take this guy down to make everybody proud of me. Uh, that... Oh, God, what number is that? Oh, it's a 10. <laughs> um, uh, plus 5 is 15. That is going to be enough. Give it to me. Hooray! It's a two-handed, so d10. That's a one, but I have great weapon fighting, so I re-roll that into the dice tray, please. And that's another one, but I got to take it. So that is three damage. Sad. Okay. All right. So uh, you are going to um, uh, come down, and uh, how much damage total? Three. Oh, wait, I have a strength of three, four, four damage. I was about to say, four damage, all right. Yeah. Uh, bringing it down, you are going to catch him in the side of the head, uh, and he is going to fall like a stone. Oh, heck yeah. All right, Sindri, it's your turn. Uh, and Sindri is going to uh, start uh, running up after uh, Carmilla. So, sorry, it's 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Uh, uh, 35, 40. So I'll use dash to get to just get up. Sure. Uh, you can actually just run, run across here to the other side of the cave so that you are like out of, out of shot range. Yeah, that's what I'll, I'll, I'll do that. That makes sense. Seemed like a good so, tactic. So I'm, I'm not going to just get like immediately murked. Yeah. So you can move to like right there. Yeah, all right. Perfect. So rushing forward, uh, you can get a look at the cave inside. I'm going to let you all know what this looks like. Okay, so rushing by, you get a glimpse a glimpse into the cave, uh, inside of this large cave there. It is about, uh, it's about a 25 foot deep and about 30 foot wide cave. You see sacks and crates of looted provisions piled on the south end of this large cave. To the west, the floor slopes down toward a narrow opening that descends in the darkness that you'll probably recognize as that slope, uh, as that, as that uh, chute. A larger opening, um, leads north down a set of natural stone steps that you are the base of. The roar of water behind you echoes. And in the middle of the cavern, you see a large fire casting a light everywhere as the coals smolder. All right, uh, that is your turn, uh, Clark and Ripper. Uh, you're going to hear Clark's voice bellow from inside. This deep, guttural voice who dares defy clark clark will build a throne from your bones 
He bellows out. Clark needs to chill. Clark, he does. Uh, goblin number one is going to take his action to bleed near Carmilla uh, and be dead. Uh, Ella, it is your turn. All right. Um, I guess I am going to move up next to Carmilla. Okay. And it looks like there's a goblin not too far away from me and probably just barely in line of sight. It is true. You could see these goblins in front of you have a number of piercings along their ears. There are two of them that look like they're flanking something protectively. They're also wearing these sashes made out of raw, barely tanned skin that have these merit badges sewn into them like honor guards. Other oh, boys right. goats. Um, I think Alessandra is going to throw a hand axe and respond to this bellow of who dares with we dare all right sounds good throw a hand axe please yeah get some uh dirty 20 <laughs> that'll hit roll me damage uh six damage six damage all right this one is going to take an axe in the side of the chest uh but still be up it leers and snarls at you what do you do do you have anything else you'd like to do nothing else I can do I believe you can throw your second axe as a bonus action can you? because they're, they're hand axes yeah, you, so you can, can do... but you don't get your bonus you don't get your strength bonus to the attack or the deck save just just to the damage actually you do get it to the attack what when? I've the been second... rolling without it <laughs> oh god no two have been fighting you you just don't add to the damage oh I thought you didn't add to the attack no do you not need to have something to do two weapon? Nope, anybody no. can do it, uh, it's, but you just don't get any special bonuses. But you can throw it with your offhand if you have it out. And if you don't have it out, you have a free object interact to draw it. Sure, why yeah. not? That's how I've been doing the double I think attacks. I probably have them out because I have been We're using them, them for the last little while. So. Um, okay, so it was bonus to the attack, but not to the damage. Yep, yeah, so you, you attack as normal, but you only do the base damage. The flat damage, okay. Yeah, for the axe. What'd you get? Natural fucking 20. Okay, uh, so first of all, who gets your inspiration? Inspiration? Because we're doing inspired crits in this game, yeah. so you rolled a nat 20, which means you grant a point of inspiration for this combat to another player. Oh shit, I forgot about that. That's right, momentum, um, baby. Carmilla. You're right next to me. Okay, so you're, Carmilla, you're, you're going to be... inspired by how hard I throw this hand axe. You're and showing like, me how it's done. <laughs> her form is perfect. You're going to see this beautiful line from the heel of her foot all running all the way up her flank into where she releases with her left hand. And I think my form is damn perfect because I rolled max damage. You needed to roll like two hit points of damage, which is... Wait, you rolled max damage on 2d6? Uh-huh. That goblin is going to explode. The head into just a... splits in half and falls apart. Okay. Uh, Curd is going to rush forward and kind of step near you and go, I'm the boss now. Curd is the boss. That's his turn. Uh, goblin number two uh, got split like a melon. Uh, Sildar. Sildar is going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And that, that wolf, there's a fire there. He has range. That will be an attack with disadvantage because of partial concealment. Oh, that was the worst. It was a nat 20. It was two nat 20s. One of them was rolled to a two. Okay, but he has a second attack. He's going to draw and fire again. And that one is still going to be a hit with a unnatural 16, actually, which is enough to hit the wolf. Uh, there's a as an arrow shoots between um, Lady Alessandra and Carmilla and slams into the wolf, um, which you can only imagine. Well, it's not a wolf so much as this rabid, curly haired beast with matted mangy fur. Um, it looks like it's part poodle at the very least, uh, but uh, it is going to slam into it, not downing it, but doing some damage there. And Anthea, it is your turn. What do you do? Okay, I'm gonna go up as far as I can. Okay. Five, 10 diagonal squares are still five? 
Um, diagonal scares are still five. Um, Lyric didn't spend 15, her movement, so she's going to trail you. 20. 25. 25. That's as okay. far as I can get. And you, I think you have a direct line for Firebolt against something. One sec. Oh, you just barely do. Oh, I see him. Okay. So I'm going to uh... give him three quarters cover because of that. Okay. So you're going to be rolling with disadvantage. Okay. But you can, there's a chance. There's a chance. You said there's a chance. Let's try. All right, just ricochet. Uh, I think that's the right angle. Oh, 10. Um, yeah. No. 10 total? 10 okay. total. Okay. So your firebolt is going to <laughs> lash out. Uh, not quite enough to actually um, to actually slam into him. Oh, uh, miscalculated. How dare you? Get him! Uh, and a goblin is going to hurl himself into the fray, uh, launching himself at, uh, well, launching himself at our good friend, Kurd. Kurd. Uh, Kurd, uh, Kurd is going to deflect it with his scimitar. Yes. This goblin's unbelievable. Kurd, yes. Kurd. Kurd is boss. Okay. And then... As you are doing that, uh, what is your passive perception? Oh, never mind. Um, so, uh, this is not going to be a surprise attack like I was hoping. A goblin hiding near the falls is going to duck out and attempt to to stab you, Sindri. Uh, but you are going to be able to see it. You'll have your full armor class against this. Uh, and that is going to be a 14. And nope. out of the corner of your eye, this goblin is going to leer forward and you are going to deflect it out of the corner of your eye. Damn, that was a horrible use of a hurt them more. All right, top of the initiative with Lyric. I think Lyric, uh, what do you think that she's going to do, Carmilla? I, I think she's going to do the same thing again, probably if she can. How far away is she? Uh, she, she absolutely can... can. So the one that just jumped out at Sindri? You call that an uh... attack? What if, can she move to the water's edge near the north, yeah. just behind um, Sildar? Alessandra? Yeah, totally. Or, so, yeah, and then catching an eye on Clark and say, uh, hey, guess what? Curd is the new boss. And use that as vicious mockery. I think that's a great one. <laughs> uh, uh, that is going to be a fail. Roll me damage. Amazing. Um, and that is a four. Oh God, that's a really good hit on this guy. Okay, yeah. so that's Lyric's turn. And then um, who's Lyric going to give Bardic Inspiration to? She's got one left. Uh, let's give it to Alessandra because she's been rocking it. Okay, so uh, Sindri or Carmilla, it is your turns. Do you mind if I go first on this one? Absolutely go for it. Uh, Lyric, kindly stop encouraging them to do better to stab me. Uh, and I'm going to spend my bardic inspiration on this. Okay. Uh, so that is 18 to hit. That is definitely going to be hit. Roll me damage. Is the one that just attacked you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so parrying its blade. So that's nine points of damage. Okay, uh, it is no longer an issue for you. Uh, it dies at your hand. What do you do? So, uh, then I'm going to take another uh, five foot step. So I'm still kind of obscured from the other ones, uh, okay. and att attempt to uh, spin kick the one that had just. Uh, oh, that's how I do that. Uh, had just moved up to attack uh, by the doorway there. Okay. And let's see how that goes. Oh, that does not hit. No. Okay. Not at all. You... <laughs> not all right, close. So. Uh, you are going to lash out, and uh, it is going to dodge out of the way. All right, and I'm going to spend... Uh, I have four Hurt the Moors. I'm going to spend four Hurt the Moors to manifest four more goblins run, coming down through the corridors. Four more oh, goblins? Nice. Jesus Davis. Christ. All right, that is going to be Carmilla's turn. What do you do? Oh, goodness me. Um... I think 
she is going to move over here in front of Anthea um, and try to block this so no one can get through. Okay. And take an attack on this guy. The front one? The front, yeah, the guy that the first goblin that's coming down the, the So you hear trail goblins here. scrabbling down the trail, uh attempting to protect their boss as they shriek out. Yeah. Alright. Anthea, no. Um, I think she is going to in no, she'll she'll just she'll again, she's trying to stay calm, she's trying to stay directed. She's gonna take her sword and swing at this guy. Okay. Go ahead. And that is a 16. That will hit. Roll me damage. Fabulous. A d10. That's a 5 plus 3 is 8. All right. You're going to split him like wood. Can I um, uh, try an intimidation roll on the other three? You can try. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I'm going to stand. I'm going to take one step forward. I think I have a little bit of movement left. I'll take one more step forward into the uh with um with the firelight behind me of Anthea's torch just an outline that has just like decapitated their buddy in front of them um and will just glare down at them and that is going to be not bad not okay. great but not bad intimidation is 16 16 okay Okay. Um, the one at the back is going to let out a and it's going to run away. <laughs> you should all bow before your new boss, Kurd. Not the boss. And there is a, a noise as Ripper leaps over this other goblin and is going to launch itself at Kurd. I'm spending a drama bomb to give this advantage. No! Uh, Ripper is going to tear into Curd. Uh, uh, <laughs> I just swallowed spit. Uh, the drama. Biting, That's what you get for attacking Curd. <laughs> uh, biting, uh, biting into Curd. That is going to be uh, 2d4. Uh, that is going to be... That's going to be 9 points of piercing damage. Curd's oh, down. No! No. Oh, I'm sorry, down. eight points of piercing damage. Uh, Kurd is down. Uh, it bites into Kurd and starts tearing him apart. Oof. Oh, jeez. And let me just help with this to make life easy. Oh, no. There we go. Okay, Kurd goes down going, I am Blaz. Uh, and at that moment, Clark leaps into the fray, not enlarging himself. There we go. <laughs> Uh, and is going to just take a running jump, clearing his wolf, landing between you all, holding this long chained morning star. And it's going to go, I am the boss, and is going to smash it uh, down uh, at Sindri. Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, Sindri, you're going to duck out of the way. This morning star takes a hunk of a stalactite out of. Uh, out from right behind you, just smashes through that. He's going to reverse Help. it. <laughs> Help. <laughs> uh, and is going to try to hit Alessandra with it. <sighs> Alessandra, I have an 11 to hit you. My 18 armor class will deny that. <laughs> okay. Um, I so it on my shield and knock it off. It's going to smash into your shield. What kind of shield do you have? Do you have a wooden shield or do you have a, a steel shield? I don't know what's a basic shield in the game. <laughs> basic is probably wooden. So it's going to smash into the side of your training shield that you came with. And you're going to see the wood is going to splinter as one of the spikes is actually going to protrude into the shield coming through the other side right in front of your face. He's going to whip it around again. I'm going to spend another Hurt Them More, and he's going to make an attack at Lyric. And Lyric is going to, like, take a leap back and go, ah, my shoes are wet, as she jumps into the water. I can't roll to save my life with this guy. I have one Hurt Them More and one Drama Bomb <laughs> left. 
Okay, uh, that is his turn. That is Ripper's turn. Ella, it is your turn. What do you do? I'm going to pull my long sword. Okay. And try and hit him. That sounds great. Let's do it. Uh, 16. A 16? Ooh, that is going to be a hit. Uh-huh. I was like, are you trying to psych me out here? Max damage! Max that damage? How much? 11. 11 damage? Yep. It's a long sword. It's a d8. Oh, I boy. Okay. Uh, Clark is going to take this slash across his chest. He's this immense bugbear. Unlike the rest of the goblins here, this is like a human-sized creature with this long iron crown atop his head, a number of like shells and bones dangling from his chest in this necklace, um, dressed in a loincloth with a pair of like studded shin guards, greaves, I guess, uh, and this like pauldron uh, and as you slash him across his bare furred chest, he's going to look down and go, my beautiful chest. And you're going to hear some fear in his voice. Okay. Uh, it is Kurd's okay. turn. Kurd, roll Question for you real quick. Yeah. Now, I don't know how it actually works in D&D. But Baldur's Gate lets you shove somebody as a bonus action. So we have we have talked about Is there this. Anything like that in real life? So you can D &D? shove as an action in D and D. Oh, okay. If I had a something good happens, I'd let you do it. Okay. Because I was gonna like try and maybe kick him back or something away from me, so I could get out of there. Okay. Uh, Sealdar is not gonna let this stand. He's going to fire a shot because he can. Uh, and he's going to hit, actually. That's a 17. Uh, and let's... Uh, that is going to be a hell of a shot. Uh, that is going to be uh, five points of damage. As that arrow strikes into him. Oh, Clark is looking very afraid. Uh, he'll take a second shot. That's going to be a miss. Yeah, that's only a nine. Um, then we are at Anthea. Anthea, um, there is a wolf tearing into, um, into Kurt. Kurt, yeah. not Kurt, Kurt. Uh, Kurt. There, there is a bugbear whipping around this immense morning star, and you see that Carmilla is fending off your rear flank from a pair of goblins that are snarling and trying to bring her down. What do you do? Mm, I think... How deep is the water? If I go to the water, how deep is it? It's decently deep there. Is it really? All right. For, for you especially. Yeah. Okay. Even right beside Lyric? Uh, right beside Lyric, like right, you'd be okay. Look, right, right yeah, there? Yeah, you're right on the shoreline. You'd be okay right there. Okay. Uh, I'd like to use Tasha's Caustic Brew, uh, which is a line... A stream of acid emanates oh, you no. from you in a line. Yeah. They're in a very nice line. Um, oh, 30 God. feet long and 5 feet wide in a direction I choose. So it's just them. And it's a saving a throw, isn't line. it? Yeah, that one's a saving throw. Okay, here we go. <laughs> it's a direct <laughs> saving throw. All right, here's the deal. Goblin first. I'll start at the back and work my way forward. Okay. For drama. Okay, the goblin rolled a two. Okay, that doesn't save. The wolf... Rolls a 14 plus that does save. two. So the wolf oh, was a ripper. The wolf poodle will be fine. And okay. uh, I'm going to roll my nuclear green dice for Clark. All right. Do, 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 do. Just checking his deck save. That's an 11. That Rolling doesn't damage. say. Okay. Um, actually kind of happens on their turn. It says a creature covered in acid takes 2d4 acid damage at the start of each of its oh, turns. Oh, that's fair. So, um, doesn't actually do anything yet. Okay, so... But uh, she'll huck an open vial of crap. It's really, it, really greeny and gooey. And it smells probably like uh, like butemic acid. Mm -hmm. And just, it is just so, like, the sickest... Bottle, like a champagne bottle? You just shake it's it a champagne bottle full of, full of sick. Yes! <laughs> oh, God. 
Um, so that smell is going to rip through you as it splashes through Clark, Ripper, and uh, that that Goblin Honor Guard member. And uh, with that, that is your turn. Okay, the Goblin that is right there is going to lash out at Sindri to protect his boss. Uh, but it is the start of his turn, so please roll me 2d4. Perfect. All right, let's go. Ooh, that's only going to be four. It's only going to be four. All right. He is definitely hurt. That's going to be 12 to try to hit Sindri, um, which is not enough. The sick is going to get in his eyes and he's going to lash out blindly. Um, his blade dancing off of yours. Uh, and we're top of initiative again with Lyric. Lyric, what do you do? That's me. That's uh, you. I think they're going to probably vicious mockery Clark again. Um, probably disengage okay. and take five step away. Okay. Um, and yeah, oh, I can't even stand. Oh God, geez, how do you smell worse? I didn't think it was possible. Okay, and that is going to be, uh, that's going to be twelve. That fails. And that's two damage. Two damage. And disadvantage on the next check. And disadvantage, on the, which is probably for the best. Okay, Did so. Did he get disadvantage on that other attack? Because he should have had that before. Uh, he he missed all of his attacks. Yeah, it was oh, rough. Perfect. <laughs> um, okay, so now it is the super round of Sindri, uh, Carmilla, Clark, and Ripper. Ripper is not affected, but Clark is. Please roll me 2d8 there, Caitlin. 2d4, but yes, I oh, shall. Roll me 2d4, 2d4. <laughs> You're like, yes, please. You roll 2d8. I play okay, with honor. On. Only three. Only three? Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Clark is still on his feet as this sickness like rips through him. Um, all right. So, Sindri, what is your proposed action? It's all going to happen simultaneously. I'm going to, uh, I, I really, I, I'm so, so pressed about this right now. I'm going to try and hit Clark. Uh, and then okay. uh, if I take him down, I'll kick uh, kick a uh, Ripper with uh, the martial arts ability. But okay. otherwise, it's all going into Clark. Okay, so flank. Okay, so Clark is going to try to smash Anthea at the same time. So on the count of three, let's do a roll off. One, two, three. Okay, that's a hit. I'm pretty right. sure. I, I miss on my uh, my scimitar attack or my okay. uh, short sword attack. If if he takes a five foot step, does he get uh, flanking with Clark uh, with uh, Ella? Uh, the catches I would uh, I would get my attack of opportunity against me from the goblin on the other end. Also, flanking is not a rule right, in 5e except for rogues. Oh, I thought it was directly across in 5e. Okay, that is, a, it's an optional rule that we don't use. Yeah. All right, but so it is I'll... it is an optional roll. Okay, so first off, Anthea, the Morning Star is going to whip back, and as you're throwing that sick, you are going to uh, you're going to take some damage. Unfortunately, you're going to take 15 points of damage. Ooh, I'm down. Uh, what is your max HP? Ten. Ten. Ooh. Uh, you are going to be out and in the water. Okay. Uh, I'm okay. going to use my bonus action to try and kick Clark. Okay, I'm going to use my Hurt the more to try to hit you. Uh, I do hit. I do hit with a nat 20. All right, perfect. I'm going, I'm super down, so. Let's uh, do it. All right, let's roll that damage. Okay. Okay, nine. Okay, what is your max HP? Nine. Your max HP is nine? Yeah. I'm a level one monk. <laughs> okay. Um, so, oh boy, um, you are going to lash out. And as you do, um, how do you stab Clark? How do you end his life? Oh, so I'm going to, um, so when I was being trained by that, the monk that was teaching me the Lovatar techniques, the God of Pain, he taught me a real brutal punch that you can take right to the throat that leaves people suffocate to death. Uh, so I'm just gonna like reach into that teaching for a moment and just like reach in and leave myself absolutely exposed as I like, crank him right in the throat. You crank him right in the throat and it's a perfect shot. You watch his throat collapse on itself 
as he takes a step back. And with his final blow, you see tears of fear in his eyes. Uh, he is going to bring the Morningstar down on you for 18 points of damage. Eh, uh, dead. Which is going to kill you instantly. Eh. Uh. Um, Carmilla, it is your turn. You'll hear a sickening crunch behind you. Um, what do you do on your turn? You've got two goblins swarming at you. I'm going to swing my longsword. And that is a miss. Okay. And that's it. That's it. Okay. Uh, Ripper is going to, uh, Ripper is going to bury his face, uh, and is going to get a nat 20 on his bite to finish off Kurd. Kurd. No! My friend! I was the boss! He says as he dies before you. Uh, now it is, uh, that was Ripper's turn. Um, and Ella, it is your turn. What do you do? Is there anyone left standing? Yes, there is a goblin. There is the dog. Uh, okay. So I will just mark some people. Uh, so Lyric is up, and Carmilla is up, and Sildar is up. Okay. Um, well, I guess I am going to attack this wolf dog thing that's right in front of me. Sounds good. I'm trying to deal with that. That is a 16 to hit. Okay. That sounds good. 16 to hit. Uh, is going to be a hit. Uh, I would like to remind uh, Krista of something real quick. Remember you had inspiration, so you could have rolled that with advantage. Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry, I forgot that that was That's a thing. Okay. That was a thing. You, so we'll come back to you in a minute if you want to try that. Uh, so, yeah. Christine, that is absolutely a hit. Roll me damage on the dog. Six damage. Six damage. What do you do? Um, I'm just going to slice just bring down. it down. Slice the head off. Okay, the head is going to topple to the ground, and you will see the dog kind of, his, his tongue, or probably the wolf, uh, the wolf's tongue loll out of its mouth as it dies. Um, Can and I point you my sword at the goblin and go, you're next? I'll let you make an intimidation as a bonus action for that. Yes. Flarg's dead. Uh, that is a 21. Uh, it's going to Jitfo. <laughs> Get the fuck out. Um, all right, uh, back around again. Uh, I want to ask uh, Krista, what did you, are you going to spend that inspiration to to roll one more die? Uh, yeah, sure. And that would have been a 19. Oh, that um, will hit then. So it would have been um, eight damage. Okay. Uh, you dropped another goblin on your turn. And... Uh, you know what? Uh, I'm going to make a morale check for that last goblin. That goblin really wants to fight. Okay. Uh, but Sildar does not believe in that. So Sildar will round the corner and will unleash a volley into it. Uh, that is going to be uh, one hit. Come on, just roll high, bro. Uh, and it is going to take an arrow in the back and fall in front of you. Uh, with that, combat has ended. Looking around, uh, you... Sir, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no go you... Ahead. I was going to say, Carmel is running to Anthea. Okay. Anthea is in the water. Uh, she has a huge welt in the side of her head. Her skull is cracked on one side, uh, but she is still alive. Uh, she has fallen into the water. And Anthea, I would like you to tell me what is the memory that is keeping you alive right now? Um, the memory is um, just the, the normal times that she had with her mom and, and dad that she really enjoyed. And then just learning all of her potions and sneaking them around and her uncle coming to her and encouraging her individuality and saying that she can help help people this way. Okay. Carmilla, as you grab onto her in the water, do you want to make me a medicine check to try to stabilize her? I would her? love to. Um, and medicine is just intelligence right wisdom uh, oh, of wisdom. course it is 
Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> of all the times, that's a nat 20. Uh, oh! And Thea, she's going to pull you out of the water. <laughs> oh my gosh. And you are... <laughs> you are going to regain one hit point. Oof. <coughs> and, and, yeah, are you okay? Gross. Yeah. Um, uh, did we win? Uh, she, she looks over her shoulder at the absolutely obliterated Sindri and the ripped apart curd. I, I don't know. Right. Uh, As Alessandra, what are you doing? Um, Alessandra is going to go to Sindri since Carmilla was going towards Anthea. I don't think it's necessarily obvious that he's dead dead yet. Okay. So she's going to go over to check and see if she can help him. Okay. Make me... How do you try to help him? Um, I think she's going to check for, like, pulse, see if there's anything that she could do His to heart help isn't stop beating. bleeding, etc. It looks like that blow just... It hit him upside the head. It cracked his skull. Um, when she's kind of checked and figured that out, she's going to kind of sit back on her heels and just kind of look at him and just try and take this in that one of her companions that she barely knows, but has kind of like been making friends with and learning about has just died. As you stand there looking over his body, Sindri, there is there's not a light. That would be too cliche for you. But there is something. There is a smolder. And in the dark room you find yourself within, you see embers. You feel them. You smell them. You can smell molten metal. You could hear something moving in the darkness. The sound of hundreds of armored plates rubbing against each other. Well now, what a pickle you found yourselves in, eh, Sindri? A voice, dark, Raspy. It's the end of time. Whispers to you across the darkness. What? What? What happened? You died. But I didn't give you your life. To throw away quite so easily. I ask you this, a pair of embers glow in the darkness. Will you ascend? Yes, I have more to do. <laughs> that you do, my boy. That. You do. And Ella, as you are sitting next to Sindri, you are going to see the gash on the side of his head is going to glow for just a soft moment. And the scar that forms for a brief moment looks like it is sealed with molten gold.
she's gonna kind of go wide-eyed, taking a breath, like just kind of a little <gasps> shocked. And she's gonna seeing something like that happen. She's going to, I think, check to see is his heart beating? Is he breathing? As you put your hand on top of his chest, it is very hot. Like a furnace for just a moment. And it almost hurts you before it cools down to living temperatures again. And then you will hear this. You'll feel this. Bump, bump. Flutter beneath your palm. And she's gonna then kind of like File this away a little bit to think about later. He has but zero hit points. She's going to try and see if she can wake him. Gently. But <laughs> like kind of like patting cheeks type thing. Like try and okay. see if Make she can Make me a medicine check. Wake. Uh, that would be... Uh, 16. 16. As you as you touch the side of his cheek and give him a couple of smacks, there will be a little tingle. And you'll feel a bit of your paladinic powers flow out. Uh, Sindri, you are going to awaken with one hit point with the worst headache you've ever imagined in your life, but alive. Lady Alessandra. She's going to look horribly shocked, utterly relieved, just kind of awed, and pull you up into a semi-sitting and just, like, wrap around you in a hug. Oh my gosh, you're alive. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm alive. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> okay. Okay, here, drink this. <laughs> She's gonna <laughs> shove the healing potion at you that she was holding before. I immediately just, like, slam it back. Is everyone else still here? I, I, I think so. Um... <sighs> and she's gonna just start looking around, going, um, Carmilla? And Thea? Oh, hello. Oh, you're okay. I'm well, going like, to... Such as I am. Slightly reserved and like kind of she'd had the noble bearing to just like flustered and falling apart, like relieved. Sindri is absolutely horrified. Just <coughs> Can I can I can I be carried? Of yeah. course you can. Thank you. I don't think oh, yeah. those goblins are going to be troubling us anymore. Let's see um, if there's anything inside of there that can be used. Yeah, you guys sit here. Um, and she's just going to kind of pat at Sindri. <laughs> yeah, like, Sindri is literally just sitting against the like, the like the edge of the waterfall, just like... And then she'll go help look to see if any of the stuff that they were looking for or if there's anything of use or interest. So looking around, you are going to find the following. The captured stores inside this room are bulky. You'll need a wagon to transport them, but luckily enough, there are a couple of wagons about, about five miles away. It seems like there's quite a lot of supplies that would have been headed to the frontier here. In addition to the stolen provisions, however, you are going to find a treasure chest at the back of the room with one thousand seven hundred copper point coins, a hundred and fifty silver pieces, two potions of healing, and a statuette of a jade frog with tiny golden orbs for eyes, far too big to fit into any pocket or pouch. Neat. These uh these supplies. They were bound for uh, the Lion Shield Coster from the looks of it. And Vandalin. Yes, we should try and make sure they get there then. Yeah. 
Welcome to the frontier. Uh, right. I guess we sh we should try and get everybody out and as much as we can and try and find Gundren. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. But first, uh, let's take a break. Hmm. That sounds like a lovely idea. And I'm I very think, tired. I think that's where we're going to call game for the night. <laughs> Uh, but before we before we do that, uh, yeah, Chris, on level one, everybody gets a freebie if they die. Ty, I had one, I had one drama bomb remaining, and I'm like, oh, you're dead, but I'll bring you back. It's all good. Uh, welcome to level two, everybody. Woohoo! the skin of my teeth. You guys, like seriously, Caitlin, you didn't die by like three hit points. Or something like that. Like it no, was... I had ten. So and I didn't take any damage before that. Oh, okay. But, yeah. But yeah, it was very bad. It was very bad. Five it was not good. <laughs> By five hit points, exactly. Yes. I know. So I was like, good. is it is it double or is it or is it one point five? Because it's one point uh, five. I believe it's. <laughs> I, I believe think it's, it's double. I think it's double. Um, yeah, or like you negative the amount of your hit points. Yeah, yeah, negative. Yeah, yeah I so thought it was negative, negative any... max. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I literally rolled exactly negative max on Chris. And yeah, I'm like, oh, yeah. No. absolutely, got clobbered. Well, yeah, I was getting worried that I was going to get hit that way because I was like, <laughs> all you need to do is hit me for eighteen, and I'm dead. Right? Hit me with your best shot. Please do not. <laughs> Don't hit me with your best shot. Please no. Hit me with some worse shots. <laughs> yeah. Take your some worst dead shot, shots. Please. Make my armor what? class worth something. <laughs> what? No. You want you want me to give you my best, right? So level two, I've roll. added seven hit points. It's much harder to kill me now. Not quite twice as hard, but it is harder. Harder. That's, that's great. Ah, oh, damn it. I rolled a nine on my hit die. So that's actually eight that I'm adding. Yeah. <laughs> I am also so adding eight. Sorry. Always. I'm so proud of you both. Thank you. I'm proud of me too. Thanks. Oh, all right. So, folks, I was really scared for you there. That, uh, I was very nervous too. That was rough. It was pretty brutal. <laughs> but I, I hope everybody. Five of us. I was thinking Kurt died, so there's no reason to do that. Well, now. Divine smite. Yeah, you I finally can do more damage. Do the thing. I can and do Krista the thing. gets an action surge. I do. I can take a second yeah, attack and style. not be lame. I feel like I should probably take defense and give myself a bonus to <laughs> I think that's a great idea. Oh, thank you so much for all the subs. Uh, mm. Folks, I want to thank you all for being here tonight. This has been a lot of fun. Um, mm -hmm. And I hope that you have enjoyed it. Um, as always, uh, I just want to let you know that we really appreciate you being here. If you want to support us over on Patreon, that's a great way to show your appreciation and to get a bunch of additional content. Uh, also, a big thank you to our sponsor for the night, Bookworm Games. I also wanted to say that uh, this is our second game. We will not be running next Monday because it is a holiday up here in Canada, and some of us have uh, some family commitments that we we it's it's family, you know, like Vin Diesel. It comes first. Uh, yeah. We always put Vin Diesel. Mine first. decided today that they need to have it on monday after all so oh did they oh that's Ooh. fun yeah so it works uh, out that uh, other people also <laughs> on monday so that now i will be able to go to that all right so uh we will not be next monday but we'll be back in two weeks and you'll have more chances to win special prizes here from our sponsor bookworm games speaking of which i think it's time for us to do our draw so you've got about 30 mm -hmm. seconds um to type exclamation mark fan delver in the chat and then we're going to do a draw uh so uh let's say so that's going to be in 30 seconds from now which is going to be slightly delayed for people watching live but and hey please remember that if you are drawn you need to whisper me lady liliana um to be able to get your info i believe we just need an email address Yep, we're just passing email addresses along. So we're and, passing it uh, on to the sponsor who will then contact you 
to get your prize to you. So we will not have any of your actual like location data. Yeah, unless you want to just say it, then we'll, we'll have it. We don't want it. Well, we I don't have to know 100% what they do need. No, so do it. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. That way they can tell you exactly what they need from you. But you do have to whisper me because half the time you guys have your don't allow strangers to whisper you and I can't whisper you. So which is which is generally a good good idea in real life, but not in this. See, I'm actually like a streamer and I don't get whispered very much at all. So, OK. All right. That's been 30 seconds, folks. It is time. Do the draw. All right. The drum roll, please. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> Ashwin Song Ashwin has won the Yay. giveaway. Congratulations. Good job, Ashwin Song. Please send me your email address. All right, folks. Uh, we have two more great prizes to give away. And if you come here, they are, I mean, they're super good. We gave dice away on the first night, a uh, a dice scroll slash case on this night. And then we have uh, a couple of other really cool ones that we're going to be giving away. Uh, so definitely come here on Fandelver 3 and 4. And hey, come for all of Fandelver. We'd love to have you for the entire experience. Um, folks, we're going to be back tomorrow night with the Shards of Nern. Please join us at 7 p.m. Pacific. Uh, or if you are watching on YouTube, give us a sub. Give us a like because and leave a comment. I'm working my way through them. There were a lot. Of, there were like 70 comments on episode one. So I'm working my way through them. Some people have gotten them. It's not because I don't love you. It's because that's a lot of comments. And I was doing it while playing Baldur's Gate with some people. So because uh, I was taking a night off. Um, but a big thank you to everybody who supports us and supports us on Patreon as well. Thank you to all of you who watched us live here as well. And thank you for all those of the subs, Soloman. Uh, I want to do a big thank you to our brand new divine producer, uh, Professor Multiverse, who's already sent me all the details about their new deity that they want to introduce to our homebrew world. A big thank you to my mom, who is also a divine producer and has no idea what it means. But hey, I love her anyway. Uh, a thank you to our demonic producer, Precarious, who is never precarious. And you can watch him on Friday nights here on uh, on Twitch, on twitch.tv slash precarious, where a bunch of Dork Tales people play under him in a, uh, a game called The Mists of Mikami. Uh, a big thank you as well to our Wizards of the Patreon, the Ink Goblin, and Tammy the Forever Cleric, who are responsible for some great magic in our lives. And finally, our High Council of the Patreon, Terran, Buddy, Amberthist, Raven with Bobbles, Karasha, Urquhart, Shefaladeth, Larook, Sorcerer Sanguine, and Mike Baxter. You're all amazing. Thank you so much. And you're amazing. Thank you so much for watching. Players, anything you want to say on the way out? Thank I you so much. Yes. <laughs> you live. Do you want to ascend? Yeah, bend the alternative. It's, mm. yeah, basically. To descend? Yeah. Mm. Do you want to get some horns? Do you want to be a tiefling mass? We'll just, we'll just color you red. It'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm excited to do the makeup for uh, that golden, uh, golden that scar. Villain. Yeah, just like yeah. put it right there on the part of your hair. It'll be great. Yeah. Um, exactly. So, folks, we will see you next time here on. What we'll do is for your art, it'll just be on the side that is not on your heart. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> good, good, good thinking there. Oh, actually, yeah. that's how he would have hit you too, because you exactly. were facing. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. So I'll just I'll just put like a little dot to show that it goes around the corner. Uh, but we'll see you next time here on Fandelver and below the Shattered Obelisk. Good night, everybody. Pew, pew, pew. Good night, everyone.